There we go. We're live. I think um, mm -hmm. it's been it's been <laughs> it's been ages since I've used um, streaming stuff. Um, I always forget how it works. Um, so, Mr. Richard Holiday, hello. Uh, we we were given three um, specials celebrating ostensibly the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Um, what very ostensibly you have to yeah. kind of squint. <laughs> What what did you think overall? So, um, I'm Richard Holiday. I am a Doctor Who fan, even though this show has pissed me off quite a lot over the last mm. probably five years. <laughs> and, you, and you're a proper Doctor Who fan as well, because you've actually made a Doctor Who fan this film, is correct. which I always this find is... very impressive. Um, Thank you. I, I, um, I just can't I did that. Yeah. I did that because a lot of people would be saying, oh, if you... If you think you know better, make your own episode. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun. Um, so it is 2023. We have had 60 years of Doctor Who. Does that does that actually matter if you count the 16 years it wasn't on air for? I think it still counts. Yeah, I think it's uh we'll allow it. It's chronologically. Unless of course the show by generated into another oh, God. show in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> I I don't know how much you've seen of um like, so uh, for the most part I haven't read any of like the articles that have gone out on other sites or or watched any of the like behind the scenes stuff, but I've I've seen little clips of these things um in in videos that other people on YouTube have made, and uh, they they seem to just be horrifying, <laughs> just um, yeah. the most ridiculous statements, and part of me wants to see them just because it, you know it's like someone saying do you want to see a horrific car crash but also i i, I sort of don't um yeah i kind of would rather not because <laughs> i do hold the show um on a conceptual level in quite high regard yeah um so where should we start should we start with the first episode yes which was the star beast which i thought now Doctor Who's had a bit of a hard run of it in the last few years. Yep. I think we are we are still trying to recover from the Chibnall era, <laughs> which was friggin' awful. <laughs> yes. I like um, to refer to it as the mistake. The mistake. It is very <laughs> it was there were so many mistakes, it is just one big mistake. Mm. Um obviously there was a lot of hackneyed writing in that um era, a lot of Changes to the show's law that kind of felt they should have been consigned to bad fan fiction. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the Timeless Children, mm. which I think the trouble with that is that the mystery to the Doctor's past is a lot more interesting than any answer you could possibly come up with. The kind of mystery and mystique around that is more interesting than anything you could sort of think to answer that particular question. I know, I think Stephen Moffat tried to do that with the whole Doctor Who, what's his name? Like, no one actually cares. No one cares. Mm. No one cares. We, we like the mystery. Um, it's actually something they also tackled back in the 80s a little bit. Um, I know I'm, I'm a bit more of a classic Who aficionado than you, Ben. Yeah, yeah. But it is all on iPlayer now, so you're free to dip into it. Yeah, I've got no excuse. Um, I, uh, my my excuse is that uh, I, I have this problem where most of the television nowadays that I consume, you know, whether that's sort of regular television or YouTube or anything, I actually I don't really watch it. I just listen to it. Um, but that classic Doctor Who, you can't do that. You have to properly watch it um, for the so, shoddy um, sets. <laughs> I I start. I I did start. Um, uh, watch, watching the you know the the very first series when it was on BritBox and then they removed it and um, and that kind of threw me a bit but I was they, I yeah I was very impressed even even just by the first um, few episodes I saw it's really quite something um, what I would suggest you look up is the colorized version of the Daleks which is the first ever Dalek story mm. they've basically taken it and kind of compressed it into a seventy five minute omnibus and colorized mm. it because it was all in all in black and white and it's really quite something quite special so it does show that the bbc can treat this show with respect when it wants to mm. um so the thing about it we've had the chibnall era which has been um, a bit of a failure um, i think the audience deserted the show because i think the audience the, the show rather made it clear it held the long-term audience 
with open contempt, really. Do you agree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like, we don't care what you, you may have been watching for 50 years, but we don't care what you think. We're going to try and attract the, the Tumblr audience. Yeah. Never liked the show to begin with, and certainly no. didn't like it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's yeah, just it's a the... baffling decision to kind of jettison your core audience. Yeah, it's like they, they decided we're going to try to appeal to an audience which famously is never satisfied by anything. <laughs> it was it was a disaster from the start. Mm. Um, so we've had the Chibnall era, now we've got that kind of out of the way, and Doctor Who's been kind of off the radar for about a year or so, hasn't it? I mean... yeah. I think the trouble the trouble with the Chibnall is it just made people not like the show very much. The audience just kind of deserted. Yeah, I was um, certainly one who properly fell off in that I watched, I think, most of the first series of the Chibnall era, um, and then it, it it was just so dull. I just I had to stop. I think and then I, to, to quote yeah. the Simpsons, my approach to um, the Chibnall era was, you know, it's going to be bad, but you just can't prepare yourself. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's that's gone now. Um, the Doctor has now returned to being a man and surprisingly turned into David Tennant again, even though yeah. he has aged about 15 years. Mm. Um, so I think that, that led us to the first question, is why is the Doctor David Tennant again, apart from um, the good old days, I suppose. Mm. Um, so I kind of went into these specials thinking, okay, They've got the old showrunner back who actually brought the show back um, from cancellation way back when. Mm. Um, we're hopefully going to be like going back to the back to basics approach from like the first four series of the new show. I'm thinking, oh, OK, this could be quite good. I haven't really been catching up with what Russell T. Davis has been making in the interim, which mm. may have been a mistake in not keeping up with that. <laughs> Um, so and so we've come into this, and obviously there's the Disney partnership as well, which is important to factor in. Mm. Um, so obviously Doctor Who's budget has probably never been higher. And it's it's interesting. You can see in a lot of the episodes there there's they seem to be doing things where, like you know, I obviously you know I don't know the the details of you know where where like you know budget gets spent and, and what what things are expensive, but there's things that lots of things just seem bigger, and they seem to have done more like. Um, lots of lots of the CGI just seems to be, they seem to have gone sort of bigger and heavier on a lot mm -hmm. of the CGI, which I I assume, I mean, I, you know, I assume adds the expense somewhat. Oh yeah, and I think you know. also they have finally gone to four K. Oh, have they? Because when they did the new series, they did it in standard definition. Yeah, um, and then they didn't upgrade to high definition until that um, the Planet of the Dead one with on the bus. Yeah. Which was actually quite a good little episode. Uh, that, that, that was that the one with the um, like the metal like um, scorpion charts or whatever scorpion things. Yeah, um, yeah, that was yeah I liked good. that one. Yeah, with the uh, Lee Evans in it, who was quite funny. He was good. Yes, he um, was very good. He was very mm. funny, and it had um, I think Michelle Ryan from EastEnders putting on the worst upper class Lara Croft accent possible. <laughs> she should have just been like Cat Slate off EastEnders. Oi, what you doing? <laughs> Get out of my pub. You know, we need so a funny. we need a Cockney Lara Croft, I think. We really do. <laughs> um, so we've kind of come, and I think we should actually address the positives of this first. Is that the show has never looked better? Yeah, I, I was um, I was particularly impressed. Um, I, I mean, I I think they must have had. Uh, as I say, I've not looked into any of the behind the scenes of this. I, I assume they had a physical version of the Meep. Um, at, I think they did, times. and they had a CGI one as well. And yeah, for when it when they had to do the um the more you know the greater expression um and so on, they they, they seemed to sort of CGI, and it it looked great um throughout. Um, and normally that kind of CGI can look a bit um weird, Rumpy. but yeah, but it looked great. Um, and um, did we did we already have the new interior of the TARDIS? By no, that, I think it? previously with the Chibnall era, we had that uh, um. Pretty awful coral reef, not even up a coral reef. Oh, yeah, that was, that was weird, like a, yeah. It's like a big gemstone with these really dark cogs on the back. Yeah. And I thought I thought it looked dreadful to begin with. Yeah. Um, um, but the TARDIS has regenerated itself into what I have to say, I really like the new control room. 
Yeah, it's, I, I, it's so yeah. much bigger. It's, it's really big. It really it's is really, big on the inside. Yeah, really spacious, really light. It it actually looks like a fun space to be in. Um, I think my, the, the last one I really liked was the, the Peter Capaldi control room that with that rotating thing at the top. I think I, I'm, I'm struggling to remember it, but I think I also liked that one. Um, it was really good. Um, mm. Even the, the Coral Reef one was quite good. The Matt Smith one was less good. Mm, yeah. Actually, what I think this new one actually rem is reminiscent of is the classic um, yes. series. It's which, got that classic is, feel to it, yeah. Well, the classic series control room is always bright white. Yeah. Studio lights were always put to max on it um, mm. because some of the lighting managers at the BBC back in the day um, all they knew how to do was put the lights on for that was it. And they're like, subtle lighting, well, no, nope, no one's going to see this. I'm like, whack it on to full. Yeah. I think that's pretty much still all what uh, BBC managers know how to do, isn't it? Is turn on lights. Um, well, pretty much. And then, uh, then turn them off again, maybe if you're lucky. You know, if they... It looks really good. And I think some of the lighting effects they've got in there are really nice. It's going to be interesting to see where they go with that. I think the passageways. And are kind of inviting the show to kind of explore that a little bit, and I do hope they do do that. Yeah, I, I really wish they'd done that more. Actually, in in all of New Who, is just like show show us more of the TARDIS. This thing is supposed to be enormous, on you know, with all these different rooms and passages. You know, show us the swimming pool. Uh, I'm pretty sure the swimming pool got jettisoned, Ben, back in season. Oh, 24. oh yes, I have a vague recollection of that. Yeah. Sorry, my, um, my, my classic Who geekery is going to come out there. Oh, and that's it. I, I, I have a recollection of it maybe also being like destroyed or in, in or jettisoned or something in um in one of the newer ones. Like, um, so what you're saying is you found a plot hole where they've jettisoned the swimming pool twice. twice. Yeah, <laughs> either that well, or it you, had well, two swimming pools. Yeah, you know what the answer to that is? It is just timey wimey. Mm. Mm. But um, with the um, with the first episode, like one of the um, uh, you know these three, I um, one of the because you know in 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 a lot of the Chimney era, so many of the episodes were just so dull, like just like the structure of the episode was flawed. Um, it it wasn't compelling. It didn't it didn't properly set up a mystery. Um, and with this one, you know that that basic feature, it felt of, like it was back to basics. Yeah. It was it was pretty much the sort of you know aliens turn up, doctor turns up, has to solve the problem. Yeah. At its core, I think there were some really good kind of like story moves because it was based on the comic book from the Doctor Who magazine. Yes. And um, one of the episodes I thought that Chibnall definitely got the um, narrative structure and pacing wrong with was the Timeless Children, um, which has its own problems, believe you me. <laughs> um, but that episode was just exposition. Yeah, I, I never saw it. I've only I only ever see, saw the reviews of it. <laughs> uh, again, I kind of watched that for the whole um, morbid fascination aspect mm. because I thought, oh. <laughs> um, okay, so we've established what was good about the episode. The production design was good, um, especially some of the stuff they were doing in the sort of street scenes at night. You could yeah. you could just tell this the show had gone up a level. Yes, and it was it was using like you know very. Very simple things in effective ways. In that, um, you know, obviously for that street scene, they must just have hired out, or you know, you know, a particular street in London somewhere, um, you know, blocked probably it off Cardiff, for a, a night or two, told. probably Cardiff, yeah, um, and uh, and film that. Very, you know, very simple to film these things at night, and um, the, uh, you know, it was just just some people people fighting on a street, a few explosions, very simple but very effective. Some cars um, being launched into the air as well. Yeah, it looked it looked fantastic. Mm. It looked really good. Um, I also, um, I, yeah. I, re I thought the, uh, you know, obviously the the design of the meep was, um, and and the the visuals of it was were great, and also their their, um, you know, the 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 opponents. I forget what they were called, but they're sort of bug looking the aliens, warriors who were actually yeah. not the opponents in the end. No, yeah, that, I kind of liked. Was... I kind of liked how they went for a deliberately kind of almost like seventies rubber monster look for them. Yes, they didn't. They didn't hold back on on just like you know, okay, you know, this is it's gonna like look monster. like a monster. Um, you know, there's, we're not going to sort of try and sort of. I think the direction was good as well. There was definitely some some tension there. Yeah, yeah, just just that sort of basic. Um, for the most part, that sort of basic scene composition. Um, you know, right, right shots, right order. Um, they're very, very basic stuff. Just seem to all be um, pretty much in place. Yeah. And it's something um, we haven't seen in Doctor Who for quite some time, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's amazing the extent to which um, 
you know, a lot of directors and a lot of shows get that wrong now. Um, they go for the arty, they go for the avant-garde, perhaps. Yeah. They're trying to obviously use it as a piece for their showreel or portfolio and not just mm. like an effective piece of drama. So I think it definitely wins some points there. Yes. Um, similarly as well for the, um, I think, you know, I I personally, and I, and I put this in my um, my written review on my website, which was that um, Tennant and Tate um, give like, you know, I think pretty solid performances, but that to me, for, I thought there was something just a little bit off. Um, but it's kind, it's to me, it was just so subtle that I was like, I, you know, I can just ignore this. For I the think they part, pretty much slipped back into the roles as yeah. if they'd left them yesterday, and yeah. it was really refreshing. So in terms of that, putting that combination together on the screen, it was it was fantastic to see. Yeah. Um, I think definitely the Doctor, especially in the first episode, we had the whole kind of like, don't mention he's the Doctor, because uh, we had to try and get out of that, um, the meta mm. crisis, um, rabbit yeah, hole look, that we'd I, been led down years ago. <laughs> I think um, I, when I was, you know, when I've watched sort of other people talking about the episode, I, I, a lot of people um, seem, seem not to be so keen on the sort of, you know, the, the, the sort of sequences where, um, uh, is, 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 she, is her name Sylvia Noble? Was um, sort of trying to prevent the Doctor from being in Donna's line of sight and that sort of thing. And I did think that know, was quite was, funny, to be honest. I thought that was quite fun. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, t I don't think it's it's terribly out of place with um, what we saw, you know, years ago in in early early New Who, um, back when Doctor Who was fun again. Yep. <laughs> but um, but I mean, um, like you know, this um, this episode, like all three, um, loses points because of just. All, all the silly nonsense um, that it, it puts into it. Um, the 2023 nonsense, essentially. Yeah, and of course the scene that um, like gets, uh, you know, has, has gotten all the attention is is the scene where, was it, the Doctor refers to the, the Meep as he and then um, the character, what is it, what is like Rose Noble, says, oh, you're you're assuming he as a pronoun and the, the Doctor's like, oh yeah, quite right, we should, we should, we should ask. And um, as, as a scene, it um you know it it it, it completely pulls you out of the immersion. Um, oh, I I would totally agree with that. I thought I was watching that, and there there'd been a few little sort of hints about that, um, which again I, I wasn't thinking was going to be front and center of the show. Oh, I yeah, I I thought they were just going to like you know they they were just going to have. It was going to be a side aspect to it. I thought yeah. okay, that's fair enough. Have it as like a side aspect for this side character. Because let's face it. The Rose Noble character was a side character. Yeah. Well, um, initially that's what I thought, anyway. Um, but yeah. then you got, but then you have this kind of scene of jeopardy, and then it's like, did you just assume that aliens? Problem? I'm thinking, okay, in real life, who the hell cares? Well, it's um, it's you know, it fails on on just so many levels. I was thinking, um, well, like, well. In my written review, I actually didn't bother going into all of the reasons why why that bit fails because, it, like my goodness, you could just spend like you could spend like fifty hours go, going through it all, and it's it's something where like some people, well, you know, there's some people who they they don't understand why why that scene is rubbish, and it would take so you know they have so many assumptions and so many assertions that they and so many beliefs. That it would, you know, it would take ages to explain to them well why actually it, that's really rubbish. That mm -hmm. scene, um, and then other people just know straight away um, like why it's rubbish. So I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to try. But one of the things that um, I, I actually sort of tried, you know, writing out some of these things when I was writing um, the review, and one one of the things, ev even if um, you as you assume that um, that that idea, this idea of you know, oh, you mustn't assume a person's uh, what a person's preferred pronouns are, you must always ask them. Um, even if you assume that that idea is valid for humans in in real life, to transplant that into um, Doctor Who, um, it, it makes no sense for the wider universe. Like perhaps this is a species um, which um, has like no concept of gender at all, and and by that I I don't mean that they are um, agender or anything. I I mean that they they cannot even conceptualize it in you know in the way that. Um, like you know, a, a, a lion cannot conceive of quantum mechanics. Like it, it, a lion simply couldn't, you know, couldn't have that idea it, like in its head. Perhaps this species has no such concept. And what you are saying, to, it, it simply doesn't make any sense. And it can, it simply cannot understand it. Um, or perhaps this is a species 
where ask, perhaps they do understand it, but perhaps this is a species where asking that question is extremely offensive for whatever reason. And we don't know because it's a different species in a different culture. Um, or perhaps, um, uh, you, you know, like um, perhaps it it does have the con like the concept of it, but it, you know, because of language differences, it you can't possibly be explained or something like that. You know, if you really want to make immersive science fiction, these are the things you think about. Um, they didn't think about any of it. Like th this creature immediately understood this thing, which is very very particular to humans in 2023 in the Anglosphere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um with without any difficulty and you know this that's that's why it really pulls you out of um the the scene and why it pulls you out of the story because you know we are we are so very aware that this is this is something that is um a, you, like the the focus of um tiktok and twitter and tumblr in the year 2023 in the anglosphere we we know that so it it, it just pulls you out of it and mm -hmm. puts the entire scene firmly on the internet uh, at this time, um, yeah. So it, um, and that's just one of the ways in which it. Fails. I think. I think the, the, the thing for me is, I just found that scene. It, it, it was playing to a certain audience, and yeah, it was also pandering. playing against a certain audience because it, I think they were kind of leaning into okay, a certain audience are going to notice this immediately. Another audience are going to notice this immediately and be very unhappy about it. So it's basically trying to alienate a third to a half of the audience. Yeah, and it um... and, and, and again, my um, my kind of problem was it just it totally pulls you out of the immediacy of yeah. the kind of jeopardy. You think if this was really happy, I know obviously we're saying we're telling it's about a show about aliens who come from outer space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if this was really happening. This kind of like, did you assume it's pronouns? Like, I just sort of think, listen, we're about to get blown up by some big bug eyed <laughs> yes. monsters. Can we have this conversation some other time, please? Is, is this really our top priority? Like, exactly. This is this is not a priority. Um, it's, um, I also it, couldn't tell as well if um, if if uh, Davies was actually making a joke about the whole thing because the meep answers with like, oh, my preferred pronoun is the definite article the. Uh, it's like, I'm well, okay, me. but like, you're not using the word the, um, it, like, like as a pronoun, as that part of speech, you, you're still using it as a definite article. What you're saying is that you always want to be referred to as your title, which is the meep. Um, so like the, the meep comes back with an answer, which is basically saying, yeah, I don't care about any of that. You've just got to refer to me as, as the meep. Just call me um, the meep. Yeah. Just call me the meep. <laughs> so I, I, I actually like wondered, like, is, is Davies tr like making a joke out of this? Because that's, that's not the answer so. that you're supposed to give, but yeah, I think it's just he didn't think it through, um, which is the case with most of. Um, I'll tell you the... why I don't think he was making the joke of it. It's referring back to the Children in Need episode where they had yes. Dav Ross and who was that terrible actor they got in? Um, Mawan Rizwan is it, I think his name. God, he's um, dreadful. <laughs> so bad. Um, <laughs> and um... and I, I, so should we talk about that for a little bit? Um, oh so yeah, that episode, yeah. It, it, it was quite a fun scene that I think is a scene you can both ignore and include in your understanding of the show it's it's, kind of it's interesting because i like i you know i i wouldn't be able to recall most of the um children in need like clips that they do but the like one with Peter davison was quite good i i think there was one a few years ago apparently where and i must have seen it but I, i've forgotten it where there was like a telephone call between the doctor and newt's commander of the harry potter universe so it's like well there's that no way that that's today. That yeah. today. No, yeah. Um, there's no way that that's canon. Like this can't. Um, no, this can't possibly be. It's um... kind of some of them are canon and some of them aren't. I think with all of these things, your mileage may vary. So I kind of I thought it was a fun scene um, with him with this um, Moran Wizwani um, being a blundering fool. Um, first of all, I think the problem was. Um, the Khalid, this, so this scene takes place during the events of, or possibly just before, a story called Genesis of the Daleks, which was made in the 70s. Um, yeah. Fantastic six-parter, I think. You should definitely go and watch it, Ben. It yeah, is, I know, yeah. It is really good. Mm -hmm. it, is really, it is one of the best stories the show has ever made. Um, yeah. 
Now, in this in this episode, the Khalids are like the precursors to the Daleks. Mm. Who would have thought? Um, and they are portrayed, and the Dalek portray has always been like an allegory for the Nazis. Yeah, and the Khalid. Um, civilization that kind of precedes him that is portrayed on the screen is even more of that, and it is freaking terrifying. Mm. <laughs> if you if you watch like you got you got Tom Baker's Doctor in this episode, and he's kind of like trying to sort of laugh and joke and you know do his usual whimsy, they're not having any of it, and mm. it is it is truly kind of like when you're watching, you're thinking this could go either way, and it's fabulous viewing. Um, mm. So I kind of feel this moment of levity is not kind of um, reconciled to the serious tone of that episode. Um, but then, of course, I was watching it and I thought, okay, fair enough. He's, he's crashed in. He's, he's taken the manipulator arm off. He's given him a plunger. It's kind of funny. Kind of fun, you know. I thought, who's this old guy who keeps walking in and they keep calling Davros? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, hang on, did I miss? I was like, did they not have the budget for his wheelchair anymore? Like, what the well, I, I think there were some um, some wanted because obviously being the, the like the children need clip they don't want to spend a lot of money on it so um, I think there was some wondering like did they just not want to spend the money on his the makeup like all the makeup and that sort of thing um, and like maybe remodeling the chair or something like that but, but apparently um, no it's his Russell T Davis and the members of the production team had issues with the old wheelchair bound Davros and the rationale I thought was a load of cobblers. This this bizarre idea that like oh there's been this this history of um, uh, people um, in or disabled people being portrayed as evil or people in wheelchairs being portrayed as evil um, so therefore we we can never ever have a person in a wheelchair play an evil character again um, is is bizarre because you know I, I had I had never thought or suspected that this like trend existed until Russell T Davis asserted it um which suggests that you know um... and his and his attitude to some people who questioned it on Instagram I think I showed you yeah. was pretty oh, yeah. like it's just, it was almost worthy of Ryan Johnson but um it's it's you know basically ev everyone like I think collectively just like what is is that a thing I did, I I've never heard of this being a thing um, no one has ever like watched an episode, watched Davros, and thought, "Oh well, clearly all disabled people are evil." No one has ever thought that. <laughs> if anything, the disability of Davros actually makes the character a lot more powerful because you think you, you kind of look at him, you think, "Oh, he's in a wheelchair, he can't do nothing." Actually, he can do quite a lot. Well, this is the thing. I I think, and it's more menacing to be yeah, quite frank. It's more. I menacing, think basically, um, everyone. Like, I mean, certainly, whenever I've seen Davros, brought, I I have assumed. That everything, everything about his appearance is his own deliberate enhancement. Um, I yeah, assumed that he was in a wheelchair, to, yeah, to give him like armor and to give like to give him sort of like half the Dalek tank, you know. Well, exactly, um, and especially during the end of the classic series, he's basically got no body left. It's a, it's a life support system, mm. um, and you think he has kind of engineered this himself. Yeah. Instead of just letting himself die, he's kind of thought, well, despite these heinous injuries that he's sustained in this nuclear war on Scarrow. Mm. And he's engineered a way to survive, and I think it's fair. And that even the, the the Daleks themselves, he's engineered a way for his species to survive. Because I yeah. think in Genesis of the Daleks, it is is kind of like theory is like the Khalid race is eventually going to turn into these mutants. Mm. So we're going to build a travel machine for it that's armed, and we're going to accelerate the mutation and just get there earlier and just go from there. Mm. I mean, his um, because yeah, I remember in. Uh, you know, one of the early, uh, what, it must have been in like series four of New Who when um, mm -hmm. uh, Davros, like, you know, he re he sort of reveals, you know, like pulls back like part of his clothes and like reveals. He's been growing Daleks from his own yeah. cells. And that, that just said, you know, this like utter like determination to sort of create this race of beings. And um, survive through them. This, yeah, utter will to do this thing. Like this is I think it's it really powerful suggested. for the character. I think it's really good yeah, for the character. Yeah. Like, um, and it's, but actually, it's, to see him walking around, and I'm trying to think if this is actually taking place before Genesis of the Daleks or even Jury, I'm thinking, does he suddenly go from wheelchair to having like his, you know, have some plastic surgery to make him look normal again? I'm like, I don't really know. It doesn't understand. I don't understand the logic of that. It, and I, I mean, think it, it, it to me just suggests that Davis has, you know, ha he hasn't thought about 
um, any like anything with regards to you know what what makes this character interesting, um, what you know what kind of um, you know just you know completely abstract of any. It's it's a you know it, it's an it's an obsession with like certain aspects of history in a certain way, like oh you know this this thing sort of thirty years ago was done, so this now defines symbolically this thing for all time, and you know we're not we're not allowed to think, think about these things in another way. The thing is, when we last had Davros on screen back in the Peter Capaldi era, that was which was not that long ago. No, I may add, mm. I think it was 2018, 2017, 2016. Mm. It was not a problem to have him in the wheelchair. So, I, I fail to kind of grasp how society may have moved so fast in that it, time. But then, but then he kind of did. You see the behind the scenes kind of interview with with Davies where he explained the decision. I think so I've it, seen clips of it. I think, um, like, it, I don't know if you... It's, it's hard to watch the whole thing, to be honest, because <laughs> you just want to throw your remote at the telly and you want to just say... I've just seen... Away. Um, I don't know if you watch any of the YouTuber Disparu, but he's um, got... Uh, he, he's, like, clipped a certain bit of Davies talking about it, where it makes it sound like um, like Davies and the whole production team. It's it's just them who has a massive problem with disabled people. Uh, it's very funny, like, to... Uh, <laughs> I'll a have clip to watch to say, that. Yeah. But, um, I watched, I watched yeah, a few that's, funny, that's funny videos from um, the Critical Drinker tore it to shreds. I think I, I've seen a, f a few of those as well, I think. Um, he's, but, um, he's, he's very good. He's very good. Um, mm. But yeah, this is this is why I thought the whole the whole pronouns thing was not designed as a sort of, you know, pastiche of the of the current thing at the moment. But I thought it was him embracing it. This Yeah, it was the thing. It was like, it was so... Um, it, it was, you know, it was so spectacularly unsubtle. It was just like, let's just transplant, um, like almost, almost, you know, literal tweets <laughs> straight Copied off Twitter, and pasted. into the script. Um, uh, like, you know, let's not let's not think about any anything we're doing at all. Like, I mean, the the fact that it's like, you know, this is clearly not a high priority in this situation when you've got people sort of hunt like hunting you down and trying to kill you, like blowing up the like outside. just. Just that fact alone means, like, Davies did not think about this very much. I think the all. trouble is, it kind of puts you on edge for the rest of the episode. Well, it's it's interesting because when this is something I, I something I've realised in in seeing these three episodes is when you have something like that that pulls you out of the episode, it becomes it's like putting a spotlight on that thing. And um, you know, I I don't really have any desire to go back and rewatch really any of these three episodes, which is a really bad sign. Um, but because also, it's like what you know. When I think of that episode, what do I remember the most? I remember the things that the pulled me out scene. of the episode, which is that scene. Um, like you know, there's plenty of other good things, but I don't remember those. There's first lots of very good they, things. I mean, mm. let's face it. I think they need some kind of commendation for making sure that Miriam Margulies doesn't swear for an hour. <laughs> the um, I mean, it's funny, Miriam Margulies. Um, I. Uh, you know, I I was, I mean, I thought she was. I'm not a big fan of hers to begin with, to be honest. Yeah, you're not. I I sort of um, I yeah, I mean, you know, she's fun on Graham Norton, I think, but um, and I quite liked her in in the Harry Potter films, but I haven't. I don't think I've seen her in, in much else. Can't talk about um, them anymore. Oh no, yeah, that is forbidden. Um, but um, the uh, you know, I thought she, I thought she was quite good at swapping between. You know, if you needed someone to do first, like uh sort of cute voice and then later an evil voice like she she can do that i think oh she um, turned it around really well because there's that scene in the car park where um the meat finally thinks oh to hell with this i'm going to just be my yeah. evil self mm. that was a really good scene as well and, and i mean this, and it was this... a good thing because they said have you not noticed the laser bolts or the plasma bolts have not been leaving any marks from the cars they're stun guns yeah. Think, that was actually because when I was watching that scene where they are firing in the street, I did actually. That was one of the things I noticed. I, was I like, noticed. That. I was thinking, yeah, those, plasma, those laser blasts are not leaving any marks on the back of the yeah. car. I think. Why aren't they blowing error? anything up? This this which is good. Which is good. Up, which yeah. means it answers the question later on. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice consistency there. Um, for which was the a attention to detail these. there is good. Yeah, it's good. Um, um, which when I was watching it, I was I was quite. I was like, oh, good. That like they're actually thinking about this stuff. Um, of course, they sort of stop thinking about it later, but um, yeah, the, um, yeah, they it, really uh, think about it. It, um, yeah, like, um, I mean, as like as for the second episode of the two, um, I, uh, 
in some ways it was the um I think it was I think I probably scored it as the worst. Um I I, I thought it was the worst of the three um because I felt it was quite it was both vast in scope but also extremely empty. Yeah, the the thing that I really disliked the most was um these long lingering um shots where it's just like oh it's just some people walking down a corridor for ages or just some people kind of talking about nothing um for ages it's it's something and this is where i really wonder if that you know how how much the disney influence is coming in because this is it was a criticism i had of um kenobi like i watched the first two episodes first episode and a bit of the kenobi show and it's the same problem just like really lingering shots where it's like come on like you know speed up the pacing a bit um this is there's no reason to linger for so long at this with this pointless CGI, CGI shot um and that, that in particular because it had a really slow pacing that episode in the beginning and then it then it picked up a bit towards the end although it was still a bit sort of stop start and it got um, exciting towards the end but there was a lot of what I thought felt like filler yeah and there was that, some there were some attempts at some creepy scenes like my arms are too long I thought, okay. yeah it um but it didn't, it, it didn't hit home for me. That episode also could the have whole, been... the whole kind of thing about them going outside the ship, etc. I'm thinking it wasn't built up enough. It wasn't strong enough storytelling. It, was it could like... have been like, I think, you know, a good 15 minutes could have been cut out of that. Um, I, you I wouldn't have missed I, anything. Yeah. I think I vaguely remember at one point hearing Russell D. Davis say that he does a lot of his script writing like really last minute. Um, Sometimes and, um, you can tell. Yeah, this this is a time where it's like, okay, maybe you should have started this one. It was like, like, <laughs> I was like, the, it was like the script's due in on the Monday. It's it's sort of nine thirty p.m. on the Sunday. You think, oh, shit, I better get this done at night. Mm. <laughs> I and, think um, one one other thing about this episode that before we'd even got into this kind of start of it um, was the whole pre credits sequence. Oh, with Isaac yeah. Newton. Oh gosh, but like that one, that that one annoyed me. So it's like you know, a lot of people online really. I think that the one was episode. done on purpose to irritate people. Yeah, it like because the, the you know a lot of people really disliked the the first one because of the um like the pronoun stuff. Um, and I you know a lot of people that are already switched kind off of by the second about, one. You kind of just compartmentalize that and think. Okay, yeah, the, the the like the um the Newton stuff annoyed me. You know, annoyed me in particular because um like my you know my my training is in physics. I did a physics degree. Like we. We we learn a fair amount about Newton. We don't know. So what you're learn. saying is you have to wear your hair like Isaac Newton to yeah. the next degree. <laughs> God, you know, I think it would be great if physicists went back to wearing wigs like that, um, just throwing apples at each other. <laughs> but it's um, you know, I mean, if you ask most physicists about like you know what what was you know, tell me something about Isaac Newton, I think most of them the first thing they'd say was, oh, he was a dick. Uh, Not that <laughs> like, he was hot. Like, wait, like I mean, like fa you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I, by it just happens that I'm, like, I'm reading more, more about sort of, you know, Isaac Newton's early life at the moment. Anyway, for for other things, but um, the, uh, you know, and it's it's difficult to assess the extent to which Isaac Newton was just like a tremendous recluse, or if he really was just a, like a, you know, a horrible person as, as kind An of the, the trope goes among certainly among, you know, this is kind of the the factoid that um, lots of physicists remember. Um, but it, it's kind of like you know, if you're going to do anything with Newton. Like, you know, having him as this really sort of cheery fellow who's just sort of wandering along, saying hi to a, whoever that person was um, who has outside, you know, it, like, it's, you know, what are you doing? It was, and, you know, the, the whole apple falling from a tree thing, it's like, okay, that's that's a fun story, but, you know, we, we all know that it's apocryphal. Um, but it, it's kind of like, if, if you're going to do time travel and you're going to introduce you, like, you know, could you not do just like the most stereotypical? Oh, it's he's sitting under a tree or an apple falls. It has like, come on, again, like you're I, supposed I, to be I, better I, than this. I kind of feel like it was a bit like Devil. She keeps thinking, Oh, who was that? Isaac, me thinking, What? Like, that's not, that's not Davos, that's not Newton. Um, I think there's a there was a lot of kind of a, apologism for this saying, Oh, what does it matter? It's a, it's a show about a time traveling alien, I'm thinking. Well, if you're going to have historical characters, you have to base them in actual history. And I think Stephen Moffat came out with a quote where they have to basically tell lies and create a better world than the yeah. one that actually happened. And I thought, this is not the way to do it. The show just cannot decide what it wants to do with this stuff because um, it, um, you know, th throughout all of, of New Who, 
there have been times when um, you know, like they've gone back um, in, into history, and it, it's it's this sort of extraordinarily ethnically diverse world. In, you know, in in the way that twenty twenty three is, even though you know, like four hundred years ago, and years ago, whenever it is, wouldn't wasn't that. Um, uh, like some sometimes they well, I'm, I'm you know, if I try to well, I think sometimes they've they've like followed what it would have been. No, sorry, um, like. That you know they've gone back in time and it's this spectacularly diverse world, even though that's what it wasn't. And then sometimes they make a real point of like we're going to do an episode that is about uh, like interethnic conflict of some kind, um, whether it's because there was a one I think there was one in like the Jodie Whittaker um, uh, run when they went to like America in whenever it was you know like middle of the twentieth um, century, um, the Rosa Parks episode, that thing, and it's like well. You know, if you're going to do episodes like that, obviously an episode like that, you can't then just decide, well, we're going to have this like spectacularly diverse um, group of people. As, we as wouldn't get are, like you know. um, Rosa Parks played by a white woman. <laughs> you, you wouldn't. But it's like a story like that is completely dependent on not making that change um, to all of the the cast and all of the characters that you see because mm-hmm. if you did nothing would make sense you know if you went back and say okay we're just gonna we, you know we're gonna sort of change all of the ethnicities from the historical he's like well you'd you'd end up with a, a white rosa parks or, or like or, like all of the different characters um change ethnicity and then it wouldn't make sense because the whole thing is about that conflict um and um and similarly when they did what was it the demons of punjab um was that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. I think it. Well, um, I, I didn't watch that one. I, th- I was like, I think I, I think I saw it, and um, and obviously, you know, it's 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 this thing. It's like, ob- you know, obviously, it's not historically accurate because you have got some aliens wandering around the place. Um, but again, you have it's to have like, a base of historical accuracy in in terms of the of the characters you're meeting. It's, it's like, like imagine imagine if they'd had like Eddie Murphy playing Charles Dickens in the first series. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been quite entertaining, to be quite honest. It would have been fun in a different way. Like... <laughs> but the actor they got for like Charles Dickens, I think it was Simon Callow. He was spot bloody on. That's the thing. It's like Dickens. Simon Callow is is not ju- he, you know he's not just like they, they haven't just tried to match the ethnicity there. It's like they've tried to get someone who really, in in some ways, like quite, looks quite, looks a bit like Dickens. Um, and um... same with um, Ian McNeese as um, Churchill. I, yeah, I was thinking about that. It's like you know, with, with Churchill, they like they 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 absolutely got someone who looked like Churchill and had um, the mannerisms of Churchill. And, and you think you know, I just said to them, well, why did you do that? Um, why why did you get someone who looked like Vincent Van Gogh? Why, like, why why have you been doing that all the time until now? And now suddenly, um, you've changed it's trendy, your mind because it's trendy. Um, and and it's it's weird because it's such it's such gaslighting as well. Because when they're asked, they're like, you know. We don't. We don't see why. Why we can't. Kind of, like why? You know why wouldn't we do this? What's you know what's wrong with people? Why? Why this? Like it's like come on. You like you, you know have exactly not been doing this doing. for ages, you know exactly and now you've doing. you've suddenly changed. Like and you, you're pretending as though like it was all just a like an extraordinary coincidence up until now. And you're, like oh, you've be, always the best had this we policy. Found just like, happened to be this chap. <laughs> yeah, the best that, the, that, the best actually just happened to be someone who looked exactly like Churchill. Like we yeah. <laughs> we or didn't choose best, him for that reason. Or what it's like? It's like the best actor just happened to be this guy who I worked with on It's a Sin. The, do you know this? This is you know, this is a bit of a tangible. This is an extraordinary thing of like Russell T Davis just seems to be hiring people. Who he knows from previous projects. Chibnall um, did this with Jodie Whittaker. He did. He did. That's true. Yes. With her. Um, and he thought, well, in lieu of actually going through any proper casting process, we're just going to do this instead. And it's you know, like w- when it comes to she was um, awful. Though. I'm just, I'm just going to say yeah. say what everyone doesn't want to say. She was friggin awful. Yeah, I, well, it I wasn't just the writing. It was, her yeah. performance was subpar. Yeah, and the um, I I like to describe it as child in oversized Wellington boots. There was just like she was cosplaying the David Tennant and Matt Smith doctors. It's it's a problem they've really had um, from time to time of like going way too far in the sort of like oh I'm such a wacky person kind Look of direction. Look how random I am. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is it's... with the thing is with Jodie Whittaker is she didn't have the gravitas to actually carry the role. No, um, which and and the thing is, you looked at it and you think the trouble is the doctor. Whenever they're on screen, they should be what you're focused on. They should yep. steal the scene wherever they are. When they're on the screen, you should not be able to look away from them. I couldn't wait to for, for not to be on the bloody <laughs> screen. She was that bloody bad. 
the um I, I don't think, think she took I don't think she took the role seriously enough. I don't think she had the acting performance. And this is where I will contrast to the new guy, um his name Shooty Gatwire. In his 20 minutes at the end of the third episode, I thought he nailed it. I thought he was very effective. I um yeah, I I, I was neither sort of impressed nor nor disappointed uh, in that like I and, and to be quite honest, that that I will take. Yeah. <laughs> He wasn't crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm certainly. I am not um, pessimistic about Gatwa in the um, new sit. Like you know, I I I sort of still am like you know reasonably expecting that he's gonna like do pretty well with whatever he's given. Um, I uh, yeah, I like I I, I I feel like he he didn't get enough of just like his own stuff at the end of the third episode where it's like yeah you know, you know, his get own story. For a start. And, oh God, that was a lovely. <laughs> But um, the uh, to, like to go back to the um, to the, the second episode um, of 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 this lot, the um, yeah the um, as you know as as I as I wrote in my written review the um, the 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 whole links in the description. Well, it would be if I if I were you know like a proper YouTuber who actually did things properly. Um, I uh, I like with them. Um, with this channel, I'm just I'm just going to be so lazy with this channel. Um, the link's not in the description, or maybe it is a bit later. I don't know. Just like just Google it. Um, but um, it uh, you know the because the the whole Newton scene, aside from this sort of like absurd and inconsistent attitude towards ethnicity swapping, which isn't you know it's not always a bad thing. It has been done well in the past. Um, the um, like another annoying thing about the op opening scene is it had no relevance. To anything else in that episode, I think all um, it did was set up a, a joke late on in the episode about Mavity. Do you know, that was interesting, like because I thought they were going to return to this Mavity thing in the third episode, but they didn't. No one um, said anything. It was like because I, I thought the thing is, Doctor Who can do these things for whimsical reasons. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Um, yeah, I thought I didn't think the the the, the pre-title sequence for that episode was bad. So it was quite well made, um, but again. What re the episode would have actually been improved quite considerably had it not been there. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just one. I mean, um, it, it's. Uh, I mean, like, th well, that that opening bit would have been much better as the um, children in need clip. Um, I agree, that would have been much better. Um, because it's just like, oh yeah, isn't it fun? The Doctor meets. They could have had Marwan yeah. Rizwan as um, <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton. That would have irritated you even more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, that yeah, that, that would have been, been so like, annoying. That would have been rubbing salt into the wound, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, he, he would have been. Yeah. He would have been even more unsuitable for that one. <laughs> guy, guy who gained notoriety for twerking at people in France, um, like he gets to play Isaac Newton. That would like. <laughs> God, that would have been so awful. Um, the um, I do think a lot of the second episode was filler, unfortunately. Yeah, I also thought, like, um, you know, it, it was tremendous. It, it seemed to me tremendously unoriginal in that um, this idea of, like, you know, oh, you go to some area of space where you think there's nothing, and oh, actually, there's not nothing. It's it's been done a lot, um, mm -hmm. and also the whole like, you know. Are you the real Donna Noble? You are you the real Doctor? I don't know. And then at the last minute, I think I'm going to sort of choose the one that's the real one. And actually, I got quite bored know. of that quite fast, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, it, it Family Guy did. Feel, it made the episode feel cheap because it's like you've got yeah. the two main actors playing against the two main actors. Yeah, it. yeah. If it, it felt like a low budget episode, weirdly, weirdly because of it felt that. not not um, for a 60th anniversary special. It just felt like it was it was a bridging episode. So it doesn't yeah. really. If if this if that if this had been a full series, th this would have been like the episode that you just watch and then forget about because it was done on like the cheap. Just, yeah, a boring middle episode. They used to do um, the episodes, the Doctor Light episodes that were usually the cheaper episode. You remember the one where it was. Um, the girl scribbling on the wall made a monster. Oh, that's dreadful. Oh, I, I vaguely, I, like, I, I think I often skip that one whenever I. Yeah, and also, that. there was the one where Peter Kay plays the Absorbaloff, which was also dire because then it insinuated that a character had a sexual relationship with a paving slab. That got yeah. That was that was weird. Um, <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? By the way, <laughs> well, the, well, there, I, was a, there was a the, the, the episode says that we still had a full relationship. I'm thinking she's a paving slab, you dirty bastard. That, yeah, that, like <laughs> thinking that's a horror. Oh, oh Jesus.
Um, what, what, what would you call that? A slab job? <laughs> God, that that sounds horrible, and it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> How do we the, go um, this tangent? <laughs> I do. I, I mean, I, I personally really liked Peter Kay in that episode, um, just because. I mean, you know, look, it, the, the trouble was that the monster was designed by a Blue Peter competition winner, so go figure. Who was it? I didn't know that. Um, oh, Peter I mean, Kay then, again. He, he made he made good work of the crap material he got there. Yeah, he he just has such such wonderful like timing and, and expression that I, you you know he pulled it off. He pulled yeah, it off. Um, it, yeah, and obviously sort of ridiculous. Creature. And what was it? I I think there was that great line where it's like, um, uh, you know, oh, they're from the the twin planet of was it Raxacorica Valapatoria? So what's the Plum. twin planet called? Plom. Yeah. <laughs> Plom. <laughs> that, that was, was great. funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and as you could, you know, of, you know, in, in in my books on the subject of trolls, you know, you you could the the, the trolls have a similar link into kind the of description like, for those as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very very unsubtle plug there. Um, the um, have you written some books, Ben? I have no I, I, idea. Got, I, you know, I, that's, it's funny you should bring that up. Uh, <laughs> but um, the, you know, that like uh, you know that that aesthetic of like these kind of gross slimy creatures. Like is is a thing that it I, kind of um, played into like know. the classic Doctor Who monster, to be honest. So it it yes. wasn't it wasn't that bad. I think that I think the pencil scribble episode was worse. Yeah, I I think I I mean yeah I I might I'm not sure if I've even watched the whole thing. I might have. I think, I think the best of... bit of that one was when he parks the TARDIS between two containers. Realizes he's, he's parked it sideways, so he can't open the door, so has to move it again. <laughs> he should have taken the hint and just disappeared. Not really <laughs> crap episodes yeah, out of there. The TARDIS supposedly knows like where to take him. So if it takes him somewhere and won't let him open the door, clearly he's uh, not supposed hint. to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Should we move on to the third episode then? Yes. Which was um, let's just say the third episode was the best of the three. It um it was the most enjoyable, I think. Um certainly compared to the previous episode where you yes, thought fuck, definitely you think, yeah. fuck me, where did now I go there? Yeah. Faster pacing, over, yeah. more interesting <laughs> things. Um the um, I thought the toy maker uh, perception and kind of integrating that into 1925 with John Logie Bed, I thought that was really good. I really liked that. Something the whole kind that of I period setting was really creepy. It was really well done. Something um, that I realised, I think after I, I did the written review for that one was um, and I was watching someone else's video that like that the, the the third episode it is just like to such a huge extent a rehash of the end of season of, of series three. With the master, like it's like mm -hmm. you know, it's almost one for one. It's like, oh, it's the archangel echo, or no, it's it's this satellite, and it's every tele like it's this signal hidden inside, you know, this, this four beats, and now it now it's an arpeggio, um, and like the fact that they even in this episode had to say like, oh, it's not like the old archangel network, it it is mm. though, it, it really is, uh, it's like it really is, it, it really was just the same as that, wasn't it? Even to the same, extent, the same of, kind of oogie boogie, kind of like. Like yeah, Madness. this this thing hidden in, but w w it was also like a worse copy of it as well. In that this this idea of like this this signal of of four beats, like not really influencing people to do anything specific, just just like making them feel sort of like good about this politician in a very vague and undefined way. That's quite nice because the four beats was good because it's actually the four beats from the Doctor Who theme music. Yeah, that as well. Yeah. Um, Which I thought was it's, quite a clever thing. It's it's quite like you know, it's it's quite vague, it's quite nebulous in the way that something like that should be. Whereas this was <laughs> like super specific. It's like oh, there is an exact arpeggio that somehow everyone's like seeing or hearing. Oh, um, everyone's got access to a screen now. Yeah, I thought and the, it the, has the, a it has a very commentary. specific effect on people. It's like you know, oh, that you know that, that everyone, everyone thinks they're so. right, and they all get angry and all get entitled and conspiratorial about everything. Um, which I is the like, social commentary was very unsubtle, wasn't it? <laughs> It's like, um, yeah, Rus Russell T. Davis would like us all to know that he's very, very clever and that he can he can say things about the internet that you, you dear, dear viewer, might not have thought about. Um, like I did think there, 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 there was a degree of some of the toy maker scenes where you kept thinking, oh, he's just trying to show off that he's written this very clever scene. Like there was the puppet. Sh the puppet show was really good, I thought. And you, and you I, just I knew that was going to be a, you just knew that was going to be a meme, didn't you? Well, that's all right then. Gosh, it, it almost it almost seems like they were trying to design a meme around that. And they um, did. Yeah. 
Again, um, I kind of thought a lot of this was, um, again, the writer maybe showing off a little, which I think was the worst aspects of the Stephen Moffat era, was yeah. his plots got very convoluted because you thought, he's showing off how clever he is. Yeah. And, and um, the, the fact that the audience couldn't decipher it or had didn't have head nor tail idea what was going on was kind of by the by. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, I thought it was a good episode. I think there was definitely some menace in what this kind of cosmic que- creature could do. Um, I kind of feel al- also some of the reviews of this episode have said this is Doctor Who leading into fantasy a little bit. Um, because this, but- this this toy maker creature can do what he wants. He, he comes from outside of our universe, so it's different rules. Well, I mean, that's, you know, this is um, like not not it's not really the definition of fantasy. I mean, like, Doctor Who has always um, sat on the edge between um, science fiction and space fantasy. Um, because it's, I think, you know, I think depending on who's running it depends yeah, how far I, I say always, each extreme you go to. I, I suppose, I mean, like, certainly in the New Who era, it has always done that. I think, and it, I, it's a it's a thing that's gotten a bit worse over time um, in, in New Who. Um, I've kind of lent into it more because it means they can get away with more stuff. It's yeah, and it's um, it's, it's very hand wavy, isn't it? I'll it's it, like it's not it's not the result of a sort of deliberate thought out choice. It's it's the result of just laziness. Um, because it's you know, if you can say, oh, anything can happen, that like then it's like, well, uh, you know, you you have no rules and no constraints, and you can do anything. Like you know, certain kinds of writers like that, they just they don't they don't want to be constrained. Um, and, I think we may that, have one of those writers on our hands here. Mm. And, um, I will say what I what I felt was a bit funny about this episode was it, the main kind of plot kind of ended with the whole Doctor getting shot by the galvanic beam, mm. and then the by generation, which was um, interesting on a number of levels. I um, you know, I, when I, I I don't dislike the idea of by generation. Um, it's you know, it's an interesting idea. It's you know. And just this if, once, if, though, please. Just this once, though, please. <laughs> this this is the problem: is that like you know the question is now like why doesn't this always happen? Particularly since we have been shown the method that makes it happen, which you know shoot the doctor with a galvanic beam and he will essentially reproduce. Um, <laughs> like why doesn't he just keep doing this? Well, didn't you um, put in your written reviews because they may have shot him between the two hearts or something like that? I didn't, but that's not me. No, that must have been someone else. Someone else. No. But they've kind of already alluded to the fact that that means that every previous Doctor has now bi-generated and, and they're yeah. older. The, and I'm thinking, oh, can we just leave the old stuff alone, please? Do yeah, this is something that Russell G. Rewrite? Davis said. I, I saw a clip of him saying something like this, like, oh, they, they've all um, bi-generated and, uh, like, you know, and this is the the toy maker just like completely messing with the entire timeline so now you can just like believe whatever you want to believe happened i just think this is this is a complete abdication of um any attempt to make a persistent universe um like you know at, at this point it's like well w- we now cannot state anything um about this universe. we we cannot state that you know there is a- anything at all is true about the Daleks or the Cybermen or the Doctor or the Time Lords. We can't state you know where they are, whether they're alive, what they're doing. We we can say nothing. Nothing like you you as nothing destroyed. sticks anymore. Nothing sticks yeah. anymore. Um, and the trouble is, is, like it's funny that there's you get these writers who think that that's fine and it's not because it means that now if if I see that like, basically anything I see on screen, I'm I I will just be thinking. Well, why don't they just do this other thing that I've that I can think of in my head? Because there's no reason why it couldn't happen. You know, when you remove all of the reasons why things can't happen, it kills any of the suspense, any of the the stakes, because you have no reason to believe the show when it's telling you that characters mm-hmm. can't do certain things. Because you've told us that they can do anything, basically. Um, it's you know, like, and what one I suspect that um, again, it's just like it's Davies just not thinking about what he's saying. Um, Thinking, and, um, all this is good at the time, but it doesn't matter what the long-term effects are. I think with a show like Doctor Who, you do have to be... You don't have to be beholden to the law, but you have to be aware of it and respectful of it. So if you start changing... I think this is a thing that Stephen Moffat wanted to do. Mm. Uh, I think this is a, an indulgence that Chris Chibnall just totally went for. He just thought, well, mm. I'm in charge and I'm really clever. I'm going to make these changes. 
it was one of the big problems during the the Moffat and Chibnall era is that I I could I could not have told you what the state of the U Doctor Who universe was. I couldn't tell you. I mean, how Daleks many times did Gallifrey get resurrected and what, I, again? I I can't tell you at this point. Like, what's what's the state of Gallifrey? Did they bring it back? Is it there? Are, are they? Are they no are idea. Or, not the slightest idea because they could. They just couldn't be consistent on it. I actually think, I think um, back in the olden olden days of New Who, where all of that was in the time lock. Was probably the best place to keep it. To be fair, yeah, they should have just kept it. Again, like that. leave it alone. Don't mention yeah. it. It's actually um, better than anything you can come up with to explain it. It's also, I mean, you know, I, I, I would love to see uh, something. Uh, something I've wished they, they would have done for years, like ever since about you know, like series four of New Who. I was just like, you know, rather than doing like Torchwood and all that that stuff, like give me a series that is set on Gallifrey. That is about Time Lord civilization, and it's but it's got all of the new, uh, you know. Maybe it's like because I think they have a like what is it, like a Time Lord Academy or something like that. I think they've mentioned On the something Capitol. like that. That'd yeah, be fantastic, show me that. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. And it's like, and you know, when it was in the Time Lord stuff, it's like, well, obviously, you know, they can't do that because they'd have to like I don't know, wreck on that or something. But then they did, and it's like, why aren't you showing me this? Show me I don't this. think I don't think they'd do it because it would mean inventing a whole new character and they don't have the confidence in their own abilities yeah. to invent a new character. They just want to kind of ride on the coattails of the established character, which I think is very sad. Yeah, and it's it's what they really like, you know, the Saying um, that, I think your idea for like a Gallifrey series and following someone through the academy or whatever, or following, yeah. you know, exploring time or society while the doctor's off doing whatever they want to do. Yeah. Maybe and they it, pop in for the odd episode or whatever. Yeah, and it can um, it can really help add to the 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 mythos of the Doctor as well, because the Doctor becomes this figure that you hear about in that show, and you know has a certain. Because believe me, on Gallifrey, they would be talking about him. Yeah. a lot. They'd be like, "What the, have you heard about what the Doctor did?" Oh, I yeah, him again. Um, and it, that would uh, be a lot more interesting. But alas, we didn't get that. We got yeah. Torchwood and Cyberwoman, where the Cyberman upgrade turned into a bra for some reason that was I, written by chibnall by the way that episode what is that i don't i don't remember this. the cyber woman where i think it's captain jack's boyfriend has his old girlfriend who was partially converted into a cyber woman in the basement oh, of torchwood and stuff happens i think i vaguely remember something like this now i um torchwood was like <laughs> that, cra that, that also crashed and burned didn't it it's sort of like because they they sort of they had some regular series and then they they sort of changed it in some way and then they did it went American yeah it was that when they did like Torchwood Miracle Day or something which was um, awful <laughs> yeah weird and like um, just a strange format but they did that the the Children of Earth one which I thought was really good with uh, Peter Capaldi in there uh, I I vaguely remember it maybe that's why that, that Torchwood Miracle Day where it was kind of like a, a co production with um, some American network as like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a shame how that they, you're right. They did a couple of series where it was just like a sort of normal, like grown up Doctor Who, essentially. Yeah, and which was quite good. But um, yeah, I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, it was some of that was written by Chibnall, and you think was it? Wow, um, Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that was a bad omen, wasn't it? The <laughs> everything he touches turns to shit. <laughs> the um. But um, with the you know with the third episode of these specials, one of the like one of the th it, it's funny because it, in in some ways it had good structural elements in that it mm -hmm. you know like it set up a mystery at the beginning and it sort of gradually revealed more. Although it was kind of a bit weird how it did it, um, like this you know this idea of like looking at a signal. Oh, it's it's an arpeggio. No, it's not arpeggio. It's a laugh. Why did we go on this tour about arpeggios? Why didn't we just go straight to a, it's a laugh? Um, you know, kind of like really artificial mystery stuff where like we think it's one thing or it's just different. And also not being funny, they got through that very quickly, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. Um, right? okay. it's, it's, also it's, like it's Donna is like this you know, next level programmer apparently now. Um all because well, she's this is the thing. Up. This is the thing. Um the character of Mel Bush, who I was actually quite pleased to see um yes, Bonnie Langston was, in the episode. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Yeah. Um you now meeting the doctor again, because obviously she was last with the doctor in the eighties. Mm. Um which was interesting. Um, and I, I kind of liked how they acknowledge on screen some of the kind of um, 
stuff that she'd been getting up to in the meantime, which was nice. Mm. It's kind of nice to hook it back to the old show. Um, yes. Because we must remember that this show is a continuity of the show yeah. that started in 1963, which I think was a very good choice And um, when they brought it back, not to just totally wipe the slate clean, but kind of yes. you know, gradually pick at that as the years go on. Because mm. um, I think it used to be for the last, for, for the last for the, or the first rather, three series, you're thinking, oh, what old monster are they going to bring back this year? It was like the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Master. Mm. That was really nice. You think if every year you think, oh, what they're going to bring back and, and rejig this time? Yeah, but when when they're sort of you know selective about it, it's like okay, we'll just we'll bring this this character back or this monster back or this figure back, and they, you know they don't they don't overwhelm you with just like you know let's let's bring it all back in one go. Um, I think Chibnall's problem was he he liked to really kind of soak the audience in the continuity, just to show off that I know what Doctor Who is. Mm. Uh, which is actually a, a tendency from the show from the classic series is kind of worst episodes but it would just be like a fire mm. hose of kind of like continuity references that hardcore fans would get but it would alienate the casual viewer mm. and 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 the, and the viewing figures um, suffered accordingly yeah i mean i i thought um yeah bonnie langford um coming back with it, like, like i i thought i you know she she, she had a very small part um but um she did it very well um, which is she got to quite... pull one of the doctors out of the regeneration. That's that's true, yes. Um, and um... I tell you what, that, that's where I kind of thought this regeneration is going to be different because remember when Christopher Eccleston regenerated, he told Rose to get back and get away from him. Yeah. And now you got David Tennant saying, "Oh, please hold my hand while I, while I go through this massive chain." You think, mm. yeah, it's sort of uh, they've. Uh, I I I feel like they've sort of messed with the you know just just the mechanics of regeneration in the sense like this is a. A, like a very energetic, sort of powerful, dangerous process. Well, you said when David Tennant regenerated, he blew up the whole TARDIS. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, that must have been expensive. <laughs> um, and uh, and was it was it when Matt Smith changed into Peter Capaldi? Was, wasn't that just like a you know really click quick of your fingers, thing? click of your fingers yeah. thing? Um, and it's like you know, okay, I see what you're doing. You're trying to keep it new. You're trying to. Um, keep things fresh but i'd rather they kept like, it consistent to be honest because they've had other time lord characters regenerate yeah, at least a bit more yeah of an element i'll tell you what my, my my kind of theory is they didn't want to do the straight regeneration where it turns from david tennant a white man into shooty gat where a black man through that kind of like transition so they did it in this particular way because if you will, will recall when Jodie Whittaker turned into David Tennant, her clothes changed as well at the same time. Oh, really? I, I actually now, didn't now, see the scene itself. Um, I have seen, and this was acknowledged by Russell T. Davis that they didn't want David Tennant wearing the Lady Doctor's clothes because it might um, have notions of drag culture. I, I'm, I'm surprised that he would be reluctant to put that in. Uh, like, yes. Seems to be completely... That... Apparently that's why, that's else why his his clothes regenerated with the doctor on that instance. So I have to keep thinking, mm, maybe yeah, I, they I, didn't. Maybe they didn't I, want the transition to go from white David Tennant to this um, black shooty gat because it would because of the optics of that. Oh, I see. Would that would there have been a moment where David Tennant would have to be in blackface? Would that... <laughs> well, I, th- I don't think it'd be that bad, but I think there would have to be a special effect where the Doctor's skin colour changes. Yeah. That's and sort so of, this uh... mechanism actually avoids that entirely. Oh, I see. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That, I, I don't I, know. I, I don't know. That, that's kind of like a, a theory of mine. I don't think it, it, it is the one. But it, given what we've established from um, the pronouns thing in the first special and the Isaac Newton thing in the second one and the Davros thing in the children in need. It's one of those things you think it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, uh, you know, but if they I, want to do it, that's fine. But I, I do wish they'd, they'd be consistent with the clothes thing though. I mean, like, you know, it, it should just like, come half on. Half of his clothes I... ended up on one, half the clothes ended up on the other thought. Details, details. The uh, uh yeah, the, like, and I, 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 really don't want to know what kind of underwear the doctor wears. I don't want well, to. Know now that. you do. Now yeah, you do. now we do. <laughs> um, and it's it's like gross underwear. But um, the uh, I, you know, I wasn't it, really paying that much attention to it. 
it's 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 just it's kind of funny just to see like the doctor walk around with no trousers for and for ages as well like yeah it's not just he, like oh I bet he I didn't put clothes on. on at the first opportunity it was just like it just and right until the end of the episode that's how they kept him at least um, they weren't the infamous tom baker y fronts that you oh, did, buy like, in the 70s. this this sounds like something i also don't want to know <laughs> Back in like the seventies, there was like a, a promotional pair of Y fronts um, oh, with dear. Tom Baker's face right on the um, oh. on the business end. <laughs> oh God! They were they were quite something. Um, it was it was it was, it was well. not what you wanted to see. <laughs> there you go. I've sent a picture to you. Oh no! Um, God, <laughs> the um. Uh, I mean, like the 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 whole the whole ending to to the third episode mm-hmm. was weird, like because it was so long, um, and it was so incongruous to the rest of the episode. Yes, um, and the uh, yeah, like because the, there was a bit that there, there was a bit of a structural problem with the episode in that um, the toy maker was defeated far too easily, given how powerful he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, with someone of that power really like I mean it's it's, it's tricky because it really needs to be a two-parter for someone of that power Other, otherwise I it deserves to be a two-parter yeah what they should have actually done is replaced the second episode on that spaceship with part one of that and then you yes. could have really I think considering also they had um who's the actor who played the toy maker Neil Patrick Harris yeah he was really good in it I I I felt like I was just watching Count Olaf from uh, a series of unfortunate events, um, and um, like, like I, I, it seems like Neil Patrick Harris is just one of the, you know, like it's kind of like Ryan Reynolds, you know, like in in tonight's performance of Deadpool, the character of Ryan Reynolds will be played by Ryan Reynolds. Um, <laughs> the uh, like, and and it's you know, it's not ne- it's not necessarily bad that it's he's basically the same as Count Olaf because Count Olaf was was never well. It's just kind of like oh, it's this again, um, and um, but it, you know, it's it it was. Was a fun character. Um, there was that scene where he he did like a dance to the Spice Girls, um, and, and oh yeah, and he turned the soldiers into balls, which was this weird sort of like Count Olaf meets Thanos scene um, <laughs> with the re- with the reality stone, um, and um, you know, re- really well made on a technical level. Like, you know, the sort of um, not you know, nice crisp image just to the actual visuals, nice lighting, nice um, set design, and co- like. Costume design and the, you know, all all the sort of transitions where it's like, oh yeah, the soldiers turn into um, bubbles. It's like what you know, it would have been better is, is is to do that as a two part and have one episode set in like the nineteen twenties and yes, then yes. go to like twenty twenty three for the second episode. Yeah, the nineteen um, twenties would, would were just like this, um, like momentary feature in this episode. It wasn't really which, integral, which was a shame because it looked so good. Yeah, um, the nineteen twenties scenes were so well done, and I actually. Also, think exploring like John Logie Baird and the beginning of television. Yeah, they could have done a lot more with that. I think um, they could have gone a lot further with that. Um, so it's a shame they didn't really, because that mm. in itself could have been really creepy. I mean, that the, the Stooky Builder was terrifying as it is. Yeah, just like, yeah, I'd so, so gross. I, I think they could have gone a lot further with that. I think if they'd eliminated that, that, that second episode and focused on this as a two parter. Yes, and um, it would have been a lot stronger, to yeah. be honest. Um, and then they I could have, have to say it, it was the best of the three. It was the best of the three. It like I I feel like it was the you know on on one level it was the most entertaining, but it 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 did have a lot of issues as well. But they were they they were sort of not not so weirdly standout issues. Um, one one of them is is just um, like um, this. A lot of the sort of connection from like oh so this you know um, because like it it's like so they use this, this doll that is bought from the toy maker and that gets used in um, the you know the first television broadcast and that's somehow like burned into everyone's memory and it's kind of, it's kind of like like this, the toy maker is is basically a god what why does he ha- you like why does he use this really convoluted Way way of doing things um, at all. Why does he do it? You know, do it at that time. Why why is it that this like? Oh, it's it's now it's burned into every screen. What? Um, what like? You you mean it's always there as like a like a very faint background image? Like what? What do you even mean? 
Um, it's, um, in, you know, in what way is this subliminal? Why does it even need to be subliminal? Um, and it's all to just like, um, oh, you know, do, do this thing where um, ev everyone goes goes a bit crazy for a bit. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, the toy maker just seems to do this really to get the doctor's attention um, rather than his stated reason, which is like, oh, I just, I, I, I was playing the ultimate game where... Um, Everyone thinks they're right. It, it 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 seemed quite disconnected on a lot of the um, the you know the actual sort of why is any any of this happening um, things mm -hmm. as well like the the toy maker you know the doctor and Donna get stuck in the sort of the toy maker's realm when they're in the corridor with all, all the, the doors maze. and then if in the end they're just kind of let out and it's it's like well you know it's because the the doctor and um, uh, Count Olaf make a deal. Um, uh, and so uh, you know, and so that's why they're let out. But it's it's again, it's like, well, why? Why would the toy maker do that um, at all? Why not just keep him in in that world for as long as he likes? Um, it, um, it it seemed to be that the episode was designed around a, a sort of structure of like they, you know, the characters will go here, they will go here, and then the reasonings for it all almost was sort of put on afterwards. Mm. Um, but um, there were also, you know, one one of the funnier. Um, sort of errors, I think, was you know they they have this that thing at the end of, you get the the two Tardis is splitting off, and um, the the new one, I, I don't know, maybe both of them have it, but the the new one is shown to have a wheelchair ramp. Um, I don't quite which, see what the purpose of that was in the end because the wheelchair user who, who actually was quite a good character, I, I didn't dislike. Yeah, her she was quite fun. Yeah, that um, was her name, Shirley Bingham. Yeah. Quite good fun, good character, good actress. Um, yeah, very good. I don't quite know what relevance the wheelchair ramp actually had because you never actually got into it. Yeah, it, it's it, it's it's sort of did the did the TARDIS make that for her? Should she now be going off with um, Shuti Gatwa um, for the next years, which actually would like probably make quite a good companion? Um, or do the, you um, think it was just more um, bonus points? For it's bonus points. It's showing off, and it's. I found it funny because all all of the ramps on the all of the like on the inside of the TARDIS, all of got all those really steep inclines going up between the things. You like mean... oh, so it's just the door that it's going to help you with that. It's not. So she's going to spend her whole time next to the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't strap you into anything else. Yeah, you can't. You can't come up to the console. That's uh, that's up a bit of a steep. Oh, I've ramp, got. I've got to show you the episode from Classic Who where they literally have to strap themselves into the console because there's. Time turbulence, it's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> oh it's good fun. Oh, there's another one in Classic Who where the TARDIS breaks down, the doctor gets morose, and, he, and then his assistant gives him the manual, which is this big old book. Hmm. Um, but you can clearly see the book is just all blank pages. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like in my Doctor Who fan film and um, Reverence of the Daleks. See it on yeah. YouTube now. Subtle plug. Um, yeah. the, the, there's a the, the unit guy gives um, our Doctor a file that is quite clearly got about three sheets of blank A4 in it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was only in the edit thinking you should have really padded that out, shouldn't you? <laughs> I think it's not even lined paper. It's just blank A4. Mm. <laughs> So it's like, oh dearie me, dearie mm. me, it's good. Fun. But I, I don't know. I, I think the episodes were were good. There are some problems with them, and there are some things that I'm going to be a little bit reserved about going into the new series. But I'm still going to go in thinking it's got to be better than the Chibnall mistake. Because I am, um, uh, you know, I, I was, I was hoping that um, from from these three episodes, we were going to see. Um, a, a, a definitive um, sort of uh, lean away from you know all the rubbish that we had in the Chibnall era. Um, but, you know both but kinds instead, of rubbish. Instead, we are unfortunately embracing some of that. There was there was a lot of references to the flux, which is apparently something that happened in the Chibnall. Era. I didn't watch that series. I was, yeah, I have no idea I, what I, it I, is. I, I like, <laughs> apparently, it's saying about half the universe got destroyed. I like that. Yeah. Um, I'm like, okay, well, whatever, who cares? But there's also there's that there was that scene in the second one where he's like, "Where are you from?" It's not Gallifrey. I'm thinking, don't lean into that timeless child. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I I have a suspicion that Russell T Davis is trying to like please all sides in this. But yeah, that, no one. Um, yeah, because like the, the the timeless child stuff, it's 
it, it like it's it's so bad and it's such a problem because it basically makes the doctor into a god um which is not very interesting no um it's it's like oh so this this doctor is this special species which is like the the font of all regeneration and the doctor is already shown to be like incredibly um intelligent incredibly quick thinking and incredibly capable um so it's you've got this character who can basically do anything live forever um comes from goodness knows where in in almost this like angelic way this is like it's, you know is like the the time lords were very powerful but they were you know at least you felt they had limitations. You felt they had flaws. Mm -hmm. um, the, oh, it's yeah, supposed the, to be twelve regenerations, but that's been hand waved away several times. Um, there was there was that moment where where it was like you know oh Gallifrey have like sent through like they've given me another twelve regenerations, which was um, like an a, an obvious like okay we're 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 just gonna keep going with this, um, but um, you know it's sort of like at least they did something. Um, to sort of explain it rather than just try and go through with it. I, I suppose I prefer it to um, the Doctor is now, like, has infinite regenerations. Um, I think the trouble is they, they did try to hint at, like, the Doctor being more than just another Time Lord in, in like, the 80s. But even they knew not to go too far with this because the answer to those questions is always mm. going to be less satisfying than just thinking about the questions on their own. Well, it's. I think it's much nicer the idea of the Doctor as like a rebel from Time Lord society, someone who you know didn't do what. Well, the the Time Lords are supposed. Time Lords are supposed to be like non-interfering, even though they interfere yeah. quite often. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's much. They would send the Doctor to be their um, their agent, so they can just deny all responsibility. Yeah. There's much more interesting if he's a like a, a rebel from that or an agent of that than if he's just like some extraordinarily powerful being from from like, heaven like patient um, zero from millions of years ago yeah um the, it, like because it's um it, it's you know it's gen generally Actually, speaking i also kind of think that the regeneration is being limitless well what's the point then it uh, it means there's there's no danger um well no if he anymore. thinks if he thinks oh shoot i'm going to die again oh it's one of my finite numbers of lives gone yeah, that, that um, introduces some jeopardy, doesn't it? If he's thinking, "Oh, I'll just turn into whoever," or maybe I'll just split off into someone else. Who knows? Oh well, yeah. never mind. I mean, the question: like, can the Doctor even die at all now? Um, if the answer to that is no, then I would say it's going to make the show very boring because you have an indefatigable, um, invincible protagonist, yeah. which is very boring. It's a, it's frank. a really risky thing to do in writing is to essentially remove. Um, like the 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 threat of death, because They're saying um, that they did that with Donna, um, she was supposed to. If you remember the Doctor, you're going to yeah. die, and then that was hand waved away. She, I mean, I mean, she she obviously still uh, Again, at least they, is they, capable they, of they, dying. Um, so like, there's still there's still tension around, like you know, oh well, obviously Donna's not going to be in stuff anymore, but um, uh, well, until, you never know, there might be a David Tennant yeah, slash Donna until they need to sort of re reboot it all again in another. Few years. Or maybe they need to top up their pensions or whatever. Yeah, I I, I actually think this is why um, they kept the David Tennant Doctor around is so that they can bring him back again. Um, I'm not with... sure how I feel about that. I'm thinking I don't really want to have multiple incumbent doctors. It's. I mean, I'm I thinking in, in Doctor Who, there is a certain linearity to as to who is the current Doctor. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, I mean, this is an oh, interesting. Like, who is anniversaries? Who is the Doctor now? Like, there, there isn't. There, there, like, there are now. There are, you know, in the sort of present of Doctor, there are two Doctors. Like, the the Doctor is still. So David what's going to happen when, like, when the David Tennant one? Well, like, what's going to um, happen when the David Tennant one regenerates? After getting bored of listening yeah. to Billy Donna for four hundred years, yeah, <laughs> um, maybe that incarnation just dies off, and the knowledge is somehow passed to the fifteenth. Who knows? I mean, this is the thing. Like the the problem is, we are thinking about it far more than Russell T Davis has. Uh, he just thought, and, oh, um, wouldn't it be good if I did this? Yeah, I, I I think it was just that you know, how can I how can I do something different to what's been done before? How can I surprise people? Um, and that is not a good way to, to you know, it, there's a certain value in that as a writer, but it should not be your only concern. Um, mm. And, um, yeah, I, I, have um, a, I have a strong suspicion we're going to see David Tennant back again um, quite a few times. I don't actually think we, we got a very good resolution to the why did your face come back? Um, no. I should have just said because David Tennant was the most popular one back in the day and the show's <laughs> in the show. So to um, 
ratings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they should they should have just like flat out broken the fourth wall. Um that would have been better than what we got. Say, so, um, look, if we script we've jumped the shark in the past, so we're just gonna go back to when all was good. That there's this real problem with like now with the sort of continuity of the doctor's personality because in in the you know certainly back at the start of new who there was this idea of like okay sure the doctor's face is changing and his personality will change a bit but he is still the same person now it's really the situation where it's like oh no no when the doctor regenerates he is becoming an entirely different person and that old person is still there stuck in the past and if we bring them back that you know almost just like separate people um and um this uh I, this creates a bit of a problem because then, like, when when the Doctor is into shooting out, where it's like suddenly all of that baggage um, that he had of like sort of constantly running around chasing things, trying to fix things, somehow it's like, oh, he doesn't have that now. What? But he's still mm. the same guy. He's just he just looks different. Um, like that's that's supposed to be how it is. But it's like, no, no. I, somehow I some all of that angst gets left is, with Tennant. Is good. What's that? I think some personality change between the regenerations is good. A little bit is good. Yeah. Um, but they're still the same character. But if you think they're just totally reinventing a, a new new person with um, this idea of like shared memories, yeah, they're gonna have different motivations. They're gonna no longer I'm saying you know, that. I do kind of appreciate that the Doctor has gone through a lot and needs to kind of process all of this mentally. Though then again, that's why they're running. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird that all of the angst has been left with one of the by generations, um, which make sort of like well, I don't know, we're like. We we know nothing about the mechanics of it and, and never will, but um, the uh, it it kind of just seems like a a bit of a forced way to sort of like oh let's let's give this character closure because that character is now just David Tennant um, and then we can cut, move on with another character who who should really have the same angst but doesn't it uh, it seems a bit messy mm -hmm. uh, and um, and something I really didn't like about the ending as well was um, this like this this weird inversion where um Gatwa's doctor um it like is is almost like consoling and acting like a parent to um tenant's doctor um and this and tenant, I, and tenant is a lot older than him yeah it's so jarring um cuz cuz shooting Gatwa is i think he's quite young I, I i don't know if he's like 29 or something um yeah he's younger than me he's 31 um uh, I, I, have, I of course, am, am twenty-eight and have been for quite a few years now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, I, I suppose, um, like, uh, it just yeah. Whenever you have this kind of inversion where the the characters are not sort of acting um, according to the sort of rough relative ages of the um, actors, it was a bit weird. It, it was a bit weird when they had like you know River Song um, being older than her parents. Um, when they sort of all, I don't know if you remember that scene when it's like, um, River mm -hmm. Song like tells like Amy Bond that like Amy and Rory are her parents, and it's 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 really weird because is the name Alex Kingston, um, uh, yeah. is is older than um, oh, Karen is it Karen Gillan, um, and Arthur Darville, so it's it's it, it's just really jarring. Um, there's something quite sort of visceral about you know when you've got the ages set up that way. Um, that's just a bit weird. Um, I think also because the new guy hasn't had a chance to really establish himself. Yeah, um, we uh, yeah. He, as for sort of what his style of doctor is, I I really couldn't say yet. Um, I I um I have a a, a a a. I mean, I don't know. Well, I I remain sort of moderately optimistic about Gatwa's doctor. Um, I I do have like some concerns that it's basically because he, he was in in that show called um sex education um which i don't know if you saw I, I i sort of watched a little bit of it and i just thought it was awful um and didn't watch anymore um but i think he was he was very popular in that and the, the show was very popular um and um i have this fear that he's basically just going to be the same as that to you know some extent um, i suspect so and uh, which, like, I just, I really wish they'd give us um, a, a proper serious doctor, um, like Peter yeah. Capaldi, except written with, well. Yeah, without the sort of like. So I know. kind of really like that whole. I think there was the first episode in Peter Capaldi. Or was it the second one where he's like, "Oh yeah, she's my carer. She cares, so I don't have to." I thought, yeah, this is good. <laughs> 
that was the, a really um, good. I think. Oh, that was it. It was Into the Dalek, which I thought was a really good episode. Mm. Oh, I, I think that. I remember, yeah. Um, but uh, like you know, give it. It's it's funny because uh, you know, every now and then you'll see like some people complaining on on Twitter about like you know, oh, it's there's terrible ageism in in acting where um, you know there's all this favoritism given towards younger um, actors. Um, and you know, to to in a certain extent, this is true. What with you know, was having so many young doctors um, in recent years, and, and I just come on, one. give me an old one. Give me one. Give me give me an actor who's like seventy. Um, give him a couple of um, series to do. I think because make him and make him a grumpy old bastard as well. Yeah, um, someone with presence as well. So many actors nowadays don't have on-screen presence, and you really need it for the Doctor. This is why um, I think um, Jodie Whittaker failed in the role, yes, because yeah. she had no presence whatsoever. Absolutely none. Like, I don't think, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, and I think it's funny, because uh, like, if they, they could have chosen, you know, if if they were sort of so, you know, they were so determined to make the Doctor female, um, it's like, well, okay, if you were so determined to that, like, choose an older female actor, because um, then you're going to get someone with tons of experience, and it's probably going to be able to have that, um, that uh, presence. I mean, they because they there was that other Barbara Windsor. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like that would that would be that would be a lot of fun. She um she's dead now. She is. Yeah. Um. She, she could probably. I think she could have done it actually. Um. Oi, get out of my childish. Um. They could have. They could have played up to that, and it. Could, I think it could have worked. Um. But um, because even was it? Was it would the, have been better than her, better than Buddy Jodie Whittaker, that's for sure. Was it um Joe Martin, um that actress? She played the uh, Fugitive Doctor. Yeah, and I, 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 all I saw of her was you know like clips in in reviews, and I never actually saw the episode, but um, she seemed to have that presence um that the Doctor needs. I just think like, why didn't you just give it to her instead of Jodie Whittaker? Um, I have no would, idea. Well, it, it's just yeah, Chibnall. Chibnall They're saying Harry that films, I'm a little but... bit wary about them kind of inserting these random incarnations of the Doctor. Well, it's, it's like to... the Doctor's Surprise! just got in infinite past lives now, hasn't he? Um, and um, well, she which, has, yeah, or they have. Just, yeah, it's it, 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 that's just one of one of the many many problems with the timeless child nonsense. Um, yeah. But, and, we could um, be here for another whole evening talking about that. <laughs> we could. I mean, um, I, uh, I, I had originally thought, like, oh, shall I, um, uh, you know, d- try to do one of these um, chats, like after after each of the episodes, and it, like, certainly we would have been able to like get through a lot more material. But um, I think I just, I'm, I'm so like rubbish at being a, a YouTuber, and that I, you have to like uh, ask permission to do live streams or set or like set up like you know the ability to do live streams. At least twenty four hours in, in advance, your first one. And I like I just like didn't remember to do it um, oh, on this channel. Surprise. So, uh, so I was like, ah, oh, let's let's just do one at the end of um, all three of the episodes. But yeah, let's I'm, do it every every so often, I suppose. I'm. I mean, I'm tempted. Uh, you know, I, I'm with, I'm with saying the... that they're only they're only making eight episodes in the new series because really? it's too expensive to make thirteen. This is another thing that's really pissed me off about the BBC's attitude to Doctor Who. It's like, just make thirteen episodes a year. Quite easy, yeah. Apparently not. Well, I mean, it's like you know, they um they, they clearly when it came to the end of um, Chibnall's run, they were like, "This isn't working. We're going to cut your budget." It's like that that is the wrong action to take in the, in this scenario. What you should have well, done. This is exactly what they did in the eighties when Doctor Who was in trouble. They were like, mm. "Well, we could give you some money to sort the problem, but we kind of don't really want to anymore." I think the trouble was in the eighties. Just to give you a bit of a very brief history lesson is. Doctor Who faced institutional kind of like um, ambivalence. Actually, no, it, it went from ambivalence to being actual contempt from the upper mm. echelons of the BBC. Mm. Um, so the show was pretty much left to it. And le- well, they ended up for the last kind of like three or four years, they scheduled it once a week opposite on a Wednesday evening opposite something ITV had on Coronation Street. Um, I mean, I, I assume I, I know very little about Coronation Street. I assume it had a massive audience at the time. I don't know if it, it still, still does. does. It does been it? Running, right. It's been running since 1960. Coronation Street It's one of the biggest soaps in the country. I like I uh, if if ever I hear a, a soap opera come on, like I, I just have to rush rush as quickly as possible to turn the television off. My um, mum used to. I could literally set my watch to like 
when my mum was watching all the soaps on about, oh, it's half past seven, it's time for Coronation Street. She's just finished Emmerdale and she's going to be on to EastEnders. Then she's back to Coronation Street because they had two episodes on a night, on some nights. But they actually scheduled it against against ITV's, like, you know, longest running, Mm. most popular soap. And this was at an era in the 80s where most households had one TV. Yes, yeah. And maybe didn't have like a video recorder that was still very expensive back then. So it's like they scheduled the program to death back then, which is mm. which is a real shame. I mean, I do hope you get a chance to watch some of the old episodes. I will I will try to curate a little list for you to have a little look at. I want to go through them in order as much as possible, um, to sort of truly uh ab- absorb it. Um well, there's know, about eight hundred yeah. episodes on there, so Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and um, I'll try I'll try and pick out a couple from each doctor for you. Um, I just, I just need to um, like properly allocate time for it. Um, Saying that, you do also need to see some of the really bad episodes. Yeah, yeah, uh, and not not least because um, uh, you you learn a lot about um, writing by by watching and reading things that are badly written. Um, you really it, do. Uh, That's like, why you could learn a lot from the Chibnall era. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, it's and it's it's why you know the sort of advice of that some people give of like you know oh read you know. Read as much as you can, like with the implication being, like you know, tr- read all read all the best stuff. It's like, no, no, read read terrible stuff as well. Fifty um, Shades of Grey, yeah, <laughs> Twilight. Um, um, I don't think other bad books. And the um, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I fucking hate that book. Such pretentious twaddle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I was um thinking about uh, you know. I'm I'm probably going to try to uh, like do these um, written reviews of the the um, ser- you know the next series when it comes out and certainly the the Christmas special, um, but um, like you know I I've been wondering about you know should we do something like this um, you know, we we could do it for um, every episode or, or or just periodically every few episodes um, I think periodically I, I, would be quite good because I kind of spontaneously the um I I w- certainly with um with making any YouTube stuff nowadays. Um, I've, I kind of just, I, you know, part of me has given up and I'm just like, I don't, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to do whatever, <laughs> whenever, um, there's no, do no, whatever structure, you want. no, no formality, just whatever. Um, cause it's uh, otherwise, otherwise I'll never do anything, but, um, so we've probably said enough in this stream to get us both canceled. <laughs> um, we've yeah. questioned the, the, we've questioned the hegemony enough, haven't we? The, it, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, like when when watching like lots of other um oh, I, I i actually think my my opinions of these episodes are are uh, you know almost astonishingly middle of the road um mm-hmm. a, a lot of people it's what, have it's just been like a lot of people think as well yeah but the, like a lot of the a lot of commentators online have you know a lot of the ones i follow are, are very much of like this is this is a dreadful this is you know this is all um dead doctor i wouldn't go dead. that far and, to be honest I'm I'm like, you know, I to you know, on some level I can't disagree with them in that like it's uh, yeah, there there were some really awful things in these three episodes. It's just like as as well, it's um I, I would say that these three episodes are the worst writing I've ever seen from Russell T. Davis in all the things I've seen of his, um, in you know, including the non Doctor Who stuff. Um mm-hmm. and um and it's like you, you know, it's some things this were just like so good, just like come on, all you had to do was not put that in and you would have been fine. For- all three episodes, there was a lot of snatching defeat from the jewels of victory. Yes, definitely. Um, and so the, on that level, I, I'm sort of like, you know, people who really just like, I'm kind of like, you know, I certainly I certainly can't argue against a lot of the things you're saying. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, there, there were plenty, there were a number of fun things um, in in these episodes. Yeah, there, there, um, there, I think there was something to enjoy in all of them. So it's why I am going to proceed... With some, with caution, but with yeah. some hopeful optimism, because I think there are a lot of good things that have been made. And again, the show has never looked better. I mean, this um, is true. I think it's good that they've got um, who's the guy that does the music, Murray Gold. Uh, I feel like we haven't heard um, any any sort of great music in these three. Like we, as in like new music. Um, I I would I would like to, like to if we'd have had new light motifs from him. Um, yeah, we didn't get that much, did we? We did get the new um, title music, which was which has grown on me. It um, it's you know they obviously they update it 
you know every every so yeah every now and then and it's um it's it's sort of if it, to me it feels it's very similar to stuff before um just because partly it has to be but also because i i don't feels like they haven't changed too much about it um i don't i don't dislike it it it, it feels a little bit ostentatious at times like with just like too many too many extra little ornamentations in the music i kind of feel that it should be more electronic um I, but he like, does like his orchestras, Murray Gold. Yeah, I like I, I I like it when they go sort of full orchestra as well. I mean, they're um, like the real test. Um, do you remember in um, was it the you know the the Martha Jones series? Um, I keep I keep accidentally saying season when I mean series. Um, so Americanisms creeping in, but um, the uh, there was there was an episode where they were in New York, um, mm -hmm. and they oh, had a, a sort of jazz piece. Um, was it's called something like "You Put the Devil in Me" or something? Um, yeah, and uh, great, great um, well, piece of music. Apparently, in it? the Christmas special with the goblins, there is a musical number. Well, that could go one of two ways. <laughs> could go um, one of two. I've got a suspicion where it is going to go. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm sort of I'm saying that. Do you remember that one, the Peter Capaldi one, and the Mummy on the Orient Express? They had that cover of "Don't Stop Me Now" by Queen. In like a sort of twenties version of that, you're really good. I don't, I don't remember that one. That I, that might have been another episode I skipped. Um, I think I might have watched it once and then like, oh, I can, I can, I can miss this next time. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, um, yeah, I am, um, I'm sort of. The, the problem <laughs> is my kind of opinion on Doctor Who sort of hasn't really changed since before these three episodes. It's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't. They were fun. Advanced... I don't want to watch them again though. No, I don't want to see them again. Like, there's. Um, which is a shame it's it's a because yeah, there's a lot of doctor who that i like watching again and yeah, again yeah even some of the um, new stuff uh, i've know, actually uh, been re-watching and reappraising and thinking actually this is pretty damn good because i think yeah. i've managed to get a bit of a reputation somehow for oh he hates new doctor who. i'm like i don't hate new doctor who i hate certain aspects of it but there's a, quite a lot to enjoy it's it like it yeah it's it's this sort of classic internet problem of um like you say you say like you, you make any kind of criticism at all about something. It's like oh, you you just clearly hate it, don't you? Like and it's um, like it's like oh, if you don't like it, why are you watching it? And like I'm I'm not gonna know if I don't like it if I don't watch it. Do I, <laughs> <you> stupid bastards? <laughs> it's like you know the, the idea that maybe I'm hoping it will improve is mm, like the completely I mean, alien idea to these people. Um, I mean, towards the end of the Chibnall era, I did kind of start to think this show needs a long rest. Yes. I still kind of feel that's the case, to be honest. I yeah, think same, it needs yeah. to be rested. It needs to be have a little bit of time spent on it. Because when they're trying to make X number of episodes every year, there's bound to be some aspects where they're like, we don't have time to think of this. We need to make some content. It um I I, I I forget what frequency the uh you know series one to four of New Who came out. I forget if that was every year or like episodes a year. Was it? Was it really every year? Mm-hmm. Wow, um, I, I mean, you know, I feel like when you, if particularly if you've got multiple writers working on these things, it should be very possible um, to to output this kind of thing. Certainly, I mean, certainly, you know, obviously the the writing is that the, the writing ought to be the quick bit. Um, I think they probably spend far longer on it than they need to, and all, and also at the same time, not enough time on it. Mm -hmm. um, like but, both, um, and too long doing it, and not long enough yeah. doing it. <laughs> not not long enough thinking about it, and too long just like. Go faffing around, like going back and forth about things that don't matter. Um, but um, the uh, yeah, I, like it's it's tricky because you know what what the BBC needed to do was not cut Doctor Who's budget and say, well, you can now only make six episodes or eight episodes. Um, I think that's they, why what they, they went needed. in with um, Disney because that did give them the cash boost. I think they yeah. needed. What they needed to do was say, like, oh, okay, like they needed it. They needed to have gotten rid of Chibnall earlier. Um, and like actually understood the problems that existed with the show and find someone who was capable of rectifying those problems. I think they um, panicked and got Russell T Davies back in. Yeah, um, they. Um, it, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure the show was close to being cancelled. Yes, I think it was as well. Yeah. And I actually, um, I, I wouldn't have been upset, which is which is a terrible thing to say as a Doctor Who fan. Um, to say I wanted the show to get cancelled. <laughs> I, I think it, you know, the the show needs to leave the domain of of the sort of, you know, the 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 network of people that it has been under, you know, for the last few years. Because I think would even though Russell Davis is, 
did taken you see over the interview it. with Christopher Eccleston and he said who I needed did, who yes. needed oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I love it when Christopher Eccleston does this sort of thing because um, he's been very kind of shy about talking about his time on Doctor until quite recently yeah. Yeah. and you know going back to season one his episodes were fantastic yes his they were, performance yeah. was just hmm. Yeah, you know he's really good, and um, I understand he had a big. There, uh, from what I understand, there was a big um, breakdown in relationships in the first episodes that he did that kind of broke the relationship going forward. Yeah. He was like, no, I don't want to do anymore. Yeah, um, which is a real shame because imagine if he'd done another couple of years, that would have been really good. I um, it's it's interesting because obviously during like in that um, I mean in that interview that um, Eccleston did, he was saying how you know in in the beginning like. The, the the whole show was just shunned um, by the BBC. No one wanted to be associated with it. Um, and then, as soon as it was a success, everyone wanted to be associated with it. And it's this this common problem in film and television where when something when when sort of none of the executives and none of the managers believe in in the sh show or film, it ends up doing really well on a tiny budget. Um, and then suddenly, once you know, once it's successful, you seem to start getting these um, sort of uh vultures in who um you know stop messing want... with it yeah and it um it, it it sort of seems like in order for a show to be good it al almost needs to be like almost constantly not given enough money um not looked favorably upon by commissioners um what they that's need to what... do in this instance was give them some more money and leave it alone <laughs> yeah and they um I, I have a suspicion that there's kind of like a you know, a, a lot of the people who are involved in it, even, even though the showrunner changes, you know, it's, there's a lot of the same people involved, a lot of the same sort of, um, you know, commissioners at um, the BBC. At the, at the top level. At the top yeah, level. and it's like, it's it's all, you know, we see the change in showrunner, but I think it's it's the, uh, the all of the rest of the network that's kind of um, uh, keeping it um, the way it is. And it can't, you know, I mean, imagine it's, it's you know, I don't think if, um, if, if the, if like the universe should happen to, um sort of you know spin out some e extraordinary chance um and like you were to become the next showrunner oh uh, I, I, i've been uh, having this dream for, yeah. for quite a long time like what if i got the call richard yeah i think it would take on doctor i'll be like yes it would transform it into something e e extraordinary because like you are outside of that group um and you know well, like, I, you... I think i think if if I, if i took over doctor who i'd probably butt heads with a lot of the executives very quickly yeah, I, I, I think you know. I think if it if it did really happen, it it would cause um like. I think I'd only of... get a year. <laughs> like, you got to go. Yeah, I, I think they would be sort of like plotting against you if it did happen. Because this um, is the thing: when I made my um fan film, which I was the writer and producer on, I kind of adopted a bit of a a somewhat antiquated, um, perhaps approach. Because back in the classic era, um. The director was not the kind of like um, queen bee, as it were. On the show, it was the producer yeah. was running the show day to day and would appoint directors for certain episodes. So that's when I took over Doctor Who for my fan film that I wrote and produced, I adopted that kind of like I am the the buck stops with me sort of mm. um, creatively. And obviously, I, I had the director who, was, who did a great job, um, but they kind of like Richard you need to do this or I'd quite often would say, no, we need to do it this way because uh, also being the writer didn't help either. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I wrote these specific words for a specific mm. reason. It's like, please don't start changing them. It's like, it, there was one instance at the end of my fan film where it was like, there was supposed to be this line about, we don't have time for this spurious investigation. And we had a big debate on set. What does spurious mean? And can we change those? I'm thinking, you can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think as a writer and a producer, you you, you kind of I tell you what, I don't know, this is a tangent, but when actors start saying, Oh, I think you should be written like this, I'm thinking, you should shut up. Because you're an I, actor. If I wanted you your your feedback on the script, I would have asked. I, I think a, a problem. I think a problem does happen when people sort of try to like cross the, you know the boundaries a lot be between these um things in that it, it's re it's unusual really that doctor who has like the same person as the producer director and writer although obviously like they don't write everything and they don't direct everything but um 
this this idea of a showrunner um is, it's a very american concept isn't it i i mean I, i'm i'm not um sufficiently familiar with american television to know like where where it's been done um i think i think having an executive producer is good but the, the thing is if i was the executive producer i wouldn't be writing as many episodes as russell t davis does i'd probably write about half as many hmm because it, then I can obviously make sure I'm supervising the rest of the team and making sure that my episodes are of high enough quality. Mm. I think the trouble it, is when it's like, oh, we've got, eight, we've got a 13 season, uh, 13 episode season, you need to write eight of them. You think, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and especially that, Mr. Mr. Russell T. Davis, who like, does it at the 11th hour. Mm. But I think it um, it can even become a problem, you know, even when like someone who is a director kind of like, you know, in the moment decides they want to be a bit of a writer and they want to change. I mean, it, it, you know, there's plenty of examples of it working when directors sort of change things on the spot. But I think sometimes you get directors, particularly with sort of really big. I, I mean, obviously, I watch so much sci-fi and fantasy films, but I, and I, I think is an effect that's quite common in that where you know something has been written by someone who is um, like a you know hopefully an expert writer. Um, and then the director... Well, saying that, you, you saw what happened with Ryan Johnson in Star Wars. Well, that, that was an example of... Because he wrote and directed and I, I think, I assume, produced it as well. Um, so that was another kind of showrunner thing. Um, uh, I probably... And he screwed the pooch there. <laughs> it's... God, it's so... Like, that's an entirely different topic, but it's so weird looking back on that. Um, I have to say, I've only watched the first of the sequels. Then, what was it? A Force Awakens. And my response was, that was a very good remake of A New Hope. <laughs> um, Shame she couldn't act, though. <laughs> um, I'm trying to Honestly, see she would, I'll tell you what, she was so wooden and um, Daisy Ridley, I mean... It's it's funny because um I I think she I, I personally think she's like quite a capable actor but um like you and very forgettable in, on. yeah in very forgettable in in those three films um in, it's, shame, it's like, a shame she it's a shame she wasn't the lead character or something like that imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> um they're gonna make three more films with her apparently um Jesus, well, they she's just to miss, my aren't they? um. But, um, right, that's another franchise that seems to have gone down the pan recently. This this extraordinary phenomenon in recent years, you know, like, and it, it seemed to, you know, Star Wars: The Last Jedi was this big pivotal moment, and I, I wish I'd been, I, I really wish I'd been like loads more active in, in commentating, commenting on on this stuff in in the time since. But it was, you know, The Last Jedi came out completely destroyed the the Star Wars franchise. Uh, and it, you know, it hasn't recovered. And it, it I keep making wouldn't. these films um, as if anyone's going to go and see them. Yeah, um, like I mean, my, my goodness, Star Wars films losing money. It's it, it's extraordinary. Um, and and then so many of the other franchises have fallen as well. Like you know, Star, Star Trek. Trek. I, used to, I used to make Star Trek videos, um, and um, the yeah, that's that's fallen. I don't watch. I think they're still making it. I've no idea. I don't watch any of it. I think Picard's um, on its last season now. I've not watched any of it. I'm just like. I watched. Um, I think I watched the first series of Picard, and um, but yeah, that was dreadful. Um, <laughs> it's just well, so many of these. It, the same thing is happening to them, and it's kind of Doctor Who's been. Well, it, it did happen with Doctor Who. Like Chib Chibnall was the same thing happening with Doctor Who, and it's it's just this weird situation with Doctor Who where it's like, oh, Russell T Davis is back. His stuff was pretty good before. Is it going to be good again? So, like, mm, I like, think we've answered that question over the last hour and a bit. It's it's like if 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 the next series were at the same quality as these three episodes, it wouldn't be worth watching. Um, it uh, you know probably might be worth watching an episode or two just to see is it going to be any good? And then oh no, it's it's more. Yeah, that's the thing I got with the Jodie um, Whittaker series. I was like, I watched a couple of episodes. I thought, oh god, she's awful. This is this mm -hmm. is dreadful. <laughs> this has got to go. If um if if they just you know. They just sort even if they sort out only a few of the kinds of issues we've seen in these episodes, the next series it's like it's maybe it's worth watching. Um, it might it was, certainly you know might well be enjoyable. Um, don't worry if it all weird. goes wrong, they can just get David Tennant back in again. <laughs> Are they going to wheel him out for the seventieth anniversary? Well, that's the thing. Like you know, basically you know any any Doctor who is still alive has a potential to get wheeled back in. Um, and I think they did that with some of the older Doctors. Yeah, which is nice to um, see, to be honest. But they're all getting on for like eighty something now. Yeah, and I, th I think there comes a point where actors Colin just... Baker's got really fat these days. 
<laughs> Colin, I can't. Colin Baker. Um, I can't. I can't remember um, what he looks like now. But um, he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I don't know how many. I mean, who? Uh, how many of them are even still alive? Um, um, you got Tom Baker. You got um, Peter Davison. You got Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann. Still around. I'm kind Chris of amazed. Edson, what I don't John know. What the... dead. Yeah, that's um, sad. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there was a time in like in in recent years when they've tried to get like just all of them um, back in one go. Um, I, I think, think for the fiftieth they did that the Five Doctors ish kind of spoof episode which was good fun with the old classic doctors which was which was good fun and I need to go back and watch that because I, I I can't it's, remember it's, it's it. got John Barrowman um, in it so I'm as surprised as if you can find that these days <laughs> oh it's probably yeah for Borton um or you say that's bad there's an episode in the 80s with like this sort of special episode and um, featuring Jimmy Savile really wow I will <laughs> have to take that one out for you because that was <laughs> I tell you what the, looking at that, that did not age well at all. <laughs> well, the doctor it's... sees Jimmy Savile on the TARDIS scan and says, Oh, that's revolting, that's disgusting. And then Jimmy Savile walks in, so I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> He could see the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, who would have thought that? Hang on, Jimmy Savile, a disgusting psychopathic monster, who knew? It, it, good. Jimmy's, Jimmy's, I like it's, it's so weird because, um, you know, growing up in the 90s, like Jimmy Savile is to a, to a great extent just before my time. And so, I like, always thought he, it was weird to be honest. Yeah. I it was a creepy like, old when, man. when the news broke, um, like whenever it was, like a little bit over a decade ago, uh, it was like, oh, he's done all these awful things. And like, I was just like, yeah, like, didn't didn't we all doesn't, just assume that? Like, I just thought that, like, of course he's a uh, like anyway. weird, creepy guy. Like, he, he looks exactly looks and sounds exactly like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Well, this um, video will never get monetized because we've now talked nope. about Jimmy Savile. Well, yeah, let's let's do, just do that. Do that. We'll do that in every one. We'll just do a br brief uh, riff on Jimmy Savile at the end of all. <laughs> now then, uh, now then, destroy. <laughs> Destroy our reputations. Um, well, if anyone actually listens to this, they'll probably think, "Oh, these two, they're probably starting their Twitter campaigns already." <laughs> yeah, this is this this will be a compromat um, on us in future because we. I mean, I we, mean, if we, we make these streams long enough, no one's ever going to listen to them back. No, just the uh, well, it's 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 um, it's kind of funny how. Um, uh, well, to a certain extent, it's this sort of typical thing of um, you know you we we have we have very mixed opinions on these episodes. Um, we are not like really solidly on any one of the sort of sides. Not that anyone really is um, like on on the I sort found, of identical I found sides. stuff to enjoy in all of them, to be honest. Yes, yeah. and it's like this is this is you know the, we we have like. But you know these very complex opinions, like lots. Of, we think lots of different things about all the different episodes. There's, there's so much detail to it, um, and it's the ob it's the thing that's existed, you know, since the start of the internet. Is that that, that obviously gets sort of um, discarded and and forgotten about. That like, yeah, you 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 know you can like parts of the episode and dislike other parts of it. I think this is um, the thing the internet forgets. That it's possible to be nuanced. It's 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 yeah. possible to think two different things about the same thing. Yeah. And it's possible to hold, you know, different opinions. Mm. Mm. And it's it's possible Imagine to that. dislike something for a reason other than what the the person who liked it is making up about you, um, which is a thing that has just typified everything since the Last Jedi. It's like, um, oh yeah, to uh, to plug my own website again. Um, I wrote Benjamin a, T Milnes .com. It is indeed. Yeah, I'll pay you later. Uh, yeah. Yes, you will. <laughs> but um, I, I've wrote an article a few weeks ago on, on on this thing I call Johnsonian delusion, which is this, you know, this inability. I read, I read that and I thought this is yeah. about Boris Johnson, isn't it? But then it wasn't. Yeah, it was about Ryan Johnson and uh, this inability to understand that, like, maybe someone has a good reason for disliking something, um, and it's it's. It's funny because it happened with the Last Jedi, and it has kept happening ever since. And it's the most bizarre thing that, like, um, you, that you, yeah, you, it is. It is just just they people will just assume that, like, oh, you dislike it for this reason. You say no, actually, I dislike it for this other reason, and they just don't believe you. Um, 
it's it's the epitome. Or they, or they yeah. impose their own thoughts. Oh, you don't like it because it's got a woman or a black character or this or that or the other. Like, there was, that, yeah, this this was. I mean, that, it was the thing when Jodie Whittaker took over. It was like, oh, all the people who dislike this are just, just sexist. sexist. It's like that. We, we just we just value like consistency in a character, and um, we don't we don't see. You know, this this seems like such an obvious change for the sake of virtue signaling. Um, it, Which um, it was, and, and it's like you, you know, um, it the 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 you know. Um, it, it's it, it it it's you know or because all, or, all of this has been said before of like you know why you know if if you want to have a a female time lord why not why not start another series why not do a spin off um, do that spin off set on Gallifrey um, nurse who focus on a <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> you're, yeah you're definitely getting cancelled for that uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um. It's you know there there are so many wonderful ways that you could have done it, um, and in, instead it's just this um, uh, you know really like blunt, um, unintelligent way of doing it. Um, that then you know and then it becomes a you know it's like oh we we tried it as a female doctor and uh, people didn't like it because the stories stories weren't written well, and and because the stories weren't well we ha like um you know now that we you know they end up changing it to a male doctor again and it's like it now creates this like bad optics where it's like oh well they're having to um like you know change it back to a male doctor because the female doctor didn't work it's like but like he's like come on it's it's more news like, like you know jody witter didn't work because she wasn't she, like, she didn't give a good, good performance as the doctor um but you know this is not the same as saying that a female doctor wouldn't work um, so what you're saying is Jodie Whittaker did a bad job because her lady parts got in the way. <laughs> oh, dear, oh my God, you're just like <laughs> we've been we've been going too long. You're get you're you're uh, going into like full cancel territory now. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah, it's you know it's 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 all been it's the truth, isn't it? It's all been said. The thing before, is, but, like, I would say I'm happy to give the show another because during most of the Jodie Whittaker era, I was just like I'm not interested. It's it's bad. It's you know one of the one of the like core errors during the Chibnall era was just that the the episodes lacked suspense, they lacked mystery, they it, lacked it tension. It just came across as bad um, fan fiction. Yeah, and it's it's like you know when you if you cannot make your show compelling, of course people are going to stop watching. It doesn't none of the other parameters matter. Um, but it's like you know because I think they to a degree they kind of deflect and thought oh it's not because anything's wrong with our writing it's because all these fans are just misogynists it, it becomes that was the really easy, easy way excuse. out yeah um and so it's it, the the whole thing create you know sort of spins itself out of nothing where it's like they make a big thing about saying we've got to make the doctor female um and then it fails for another an entirely separate and reason they did the episode and where it's like stephen fry comes along or was it lenny henry says oh our record show the doctor was a man oh no i've had an upgrade i'm thinking oh that was just a that was just a I think you put it in your website. That was just an fu to people who didn't like that change. It was, yeah. It's it's like they went so hard on it, and then they have to walk it back, and then they go even. You were know, they they, they have to that. walk it and back also, for other reasons, and then then it looks terrible, and they have to like put out all this sort of propaganda like, oh no, no, you dislike it for um, this, all these other reasons. This um, takes us back to an episode in the in the first of the specials towards the end, um, where they said all. Oh, we're, we're, we're women, we can just let go of our emotions, something that a a male presenting Time Lord can't. I'm thinking that was an eye roll moment. But I mean, that was mad because, um, like, you know... It doesn't like, make any sense. It also, it was like male presenting. What does that, what does that really mean? Here? So it means you're wearing what we think of as typically male clothes and you, you have a typically male hairstyle. Um, male body. That's it. Like so, you can't. You are unable to think a certain way because of the clothes you're wearing. That's what That's they nice were saying. Sexist, there, it's mad. <laughs> well, it is sexist, isn't it? it? It's sexist, and it's also just incoherent. Um, like there, there's like obviously the clothes you're wearing do not affect you, what you can think about. Uh, and even more mad when you consider, well, he he was female for a bit. So why, why would he she, not still did, be able to think Why didn't Lady Doctor go and do all this? Oh, no. uh, like, um, but it, but it's just you know like. If the doctor had always been male, you might then be able to say, like, oh, well, you know, you, you've never experienced this, uh, you know, or like being being female or whatever. So you would never have, have, have like an understanding of this. But he has been female. Um, so he should, well, he should a, have that that's understanding. That's a sentence I didn't expect to hear you say. It's, it's extraordinary. Well, you know, he, here's the thing. Um, like, if, if we were to treat this like proper science fiction, 
um, we would say that um, the, the doctor is of an unknown species, right? The timeless child meant that we do not know what species the doctor is. Well, I thought we weren't talking about the timeless child. We're well, that. since since they're going hard on it, like um, the, uh, you, you know, it means the doctor is a different species. We don't know how that species reproduces at all. We don't even also, know if they have biological sex. Um, well, so maybe the doctor the do didn't change sex the at all. The doctor does have a granddaughter who may In, now be a grandson. Is that, that's, um, because the there's also... Doctor. Yeah, that's what there's there because there's also the doctor's like clone daughter. Um, oh yeah, who's actually now married to David Tennant, and yes. who is actually the the daughter of Doctor Who actor Pete uh, Peter yeah, Davison. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Well, that's, that's, that's not really fun. Is that basically incest at this point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but um, I'm Dad. I'm married to you in the future. That sounds like a <laughs> that sounds like a, a Jeremy Kyle segment, doesn't it? <laughs> This, uh, yeah, for the weird. Dad, uh, I'm married to the man you become in the future. Yeah, got to, got to, got to keep a clear separation between. Uh, and the DNA the, test will show that. Universe. <laughs> oh dear, no. That's... But also, it's just like the the Doctor regenerating and changing gender, or rather, the, the Time Lords doing this, has been quite a new thing anyway. That is introduced by Stephen Moffat because he had that character. Yes. I think it was called the General, who became an old, who was a. Old white man, you became a stroppy black woman. <laughs> was was that the one who regenerated with full makeup? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. He, he was against Peter Capaldi in some form. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, 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 um, and then course, says, "Oh, it's the first time I've ever been a man. Never again." I'm thinking, "Oh, piss off." <laughs> yes, yeah, just like did deliberate sort of um, baiting, really. But and, and they then 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 they did it with the the master after that as well, didn't they? Um, and. Um, it, it, like I will say like, one thing: the master in the Jodie Whittaker era, it was just like watching a, a sixth former on crack. That was the such characterization a dumb one, wasn't it? was so bad. Yeah, his um, characterization was just just go mad. It's it's it, it, it basically moustache twirling. Because Sasha Dowan was in um, uh, Marvel's um, Iron Fist, and um, um, that sounds quite painful to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, I, I, I sort it of might, um, it might make your eyes water a little bit. <laughs> like Sa Sasha Darwin, I like I always feel like he's like he's he's a better actor than the parts he's given. Um, and I think and, the writing for him was dreadful as the master. Yeah, dreadful. Um, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, aren't um, I evil? <laughs> he he could have been given so much more, and he could have done so much more, which is something that's so true of you know so much Ooh, of the Chibnall. last um. You see, yeah, it's the last few series. Um, All of and, Chibnall um, was dreadful. Mm, and um, let's just face it, Chibnall was a mediocre writer at best. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, at best is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Um, and I have to think promoting him was a big mistake. Um, yeah, I because I, I I forget I, I know he's done various episodes of of main doc of main Doctor Who over the years. I think, very good. Um, I can't remember which which ones any of them were. Well, exactly. That's a, that's not even a really good spot, is it? <laughs> I know you've written for uh, but I can't remember any of your episodes. They can't have been that memorable. Yeah, because with with Moffat, I could just remember. That. Oh, yeah, that was the the Weeping Angels stuff with Link. him. Um, and um, it's a, uh, uh, but um, Moffat kind of. I mean, Moffat suffered from you know the the Sherlock effect. Um, Delusions of grandeur. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and in, in fairness, like Stephen Moffat, I don't know if you ever saw that sitcom coupling on two decades ago. I saw some episodes of that; it was quite good. Yeah, the, like there were some like great episodes of that. Um, that was where he really got into this sort of like, let me make a really complex timeline. And he did some episodes where it's like, um, you know, we saw two different perspectives or three different perspectives. We saw a fragment of each one, and they all joined up. Really, like you know, great stuff, very clever. And that's that's sort of clearly where he got into this kind of thing. Of um, uh, do you know doing these like really cleverly structured episodes, and it's kind of like you know it's great, but you went a bit too far um, uh, with certainly with Sherlock, and then with um, Doctor Who. Um, it went to his head. He became an arsehole. <laughs> um, it's you're it's funny. You're not disagreeing. You're not disagreeing. Mm, it's um, it's funny how uh, this this it's re it seems to be really hard to get someone sort of in charge of an overarching story who's properly good and knows what they're doing. So it's, it's the same thing with the MCU and that the MCU seems to survive, very, you know, do very well under Kevin Feige for a while. 
um, you know, all the way up until Endgame, and then it's just kind of fallen off. And it's like, how has Kevin Feige lost this ability to manage all of this in a way that's actually good? Um, it's the same thing with Russell T. Davis. It's like, you know, he he seems to be good at this. He seems to have lost that ability. Um, He's gone up his own arse, hasn't he? I think it's Disparu that says, um, uh, "You're you're only as good as as your current work." Um, which I, I I somewhat disagree with um, because uh, you know, <laughs> partly because I I hope if I ever write anything that's terrible to, to not be judged exclusively by that. Yeah, <laughs> um, no. but, um, the uh, you know to a certain extent I sort of like well you know it's it's kind of hard to disagree. I mean I I you know the, these three episodes have, have certainly not been Russell T Davis's best, even though they have some fun elements. Um, They're certainly the better episodes of the of the year. Um, did, did, did we have some Gibraltar stuff earlier this year? No, no, no. I mean, it's certainly better than anything that's come before in recent memory. Oh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Um, which is... Um, but it's, um, you, you know, like... Uh, yeah, I, there, there seems to be this problem of, like, stuff going to uh, showrunners' heads. Um, and uh, they almost need to be... Uh, I think as well, like, Russell T. Davis has had a lot of successful shows over the years. Um, and um, it, it, you know, when when he was first doing Doctor Who, he had had ve- much less, um, you know, success behind him, and so it was it was much less likely that you know sort of the BBC commissioners would take him seriously. Whereas now, I think it's kind of like you know, it's sort of they lay like out a, the red carpet. They're like, oh yes, yeah. Russell today was you can have whatever you want. Yeah, he's um, a big bag of money. Mm, and um, I think that's actually quite dangerous because there's no kind of like checks and balances in what this guy's doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, Again, with the scripts, it's like no one said, "Are you sure about this?" Yeah, because I think like... he's, he's he's assembled a team around him that all think the way he does. Because with the Davos, he said, "All oh, me and me and lots of members of my team, we think we all feel the same." Thinking, hmm. Mm. You either, need, as a writer, you either need to have excellent self restraint, or you need to someone have needs to challenge other, you other restraint. Yeah, and for you know, for a lot of obviously for for book writing and so on that that person is if you're going traditional publishing that person is obviously the like the commissioning editor or the, or the publisher oh uh, yeah the publisher um and um uh with I mean, it, it's obviously you know an obvious problem with self-publishing that has been known for years is that you get some people who just they will do anything and they will publish anything. But this is why um, with self-publishing i take my critiques very seriously hmm. do you I do think... um uh like uh what Have do they call beta it reading beta reading yeah um, i do i've in, in fact i've sent a book out um, today for some beta reading oh. because I I know I am not skilled enough to be able to edit my own work effectively mm. and be able to recognise all of the faults. So yeah, I, and also I really enjoy getting the feedback as well. Mm. I find it is a very enjoyable part of the writing process. It's like when I was writing the script for Doctor Who, I'm by I by no means enjoyed writing the script because I don't enjoy screenwriting, but I made a, an exception for that because it was Doctor Who, something mm. I enjoyed and. Mm. There's there's some joy about when you're writing a script and you end up writing, oh, next character is Dalek. What's the dialogue? Exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is fantastically fun. I, uh... I've, got to, I've got to actually put that on paper. Uh, and when the Dalek turned up on set, and we saw it being assembled, uh, yeah, that, we, we that all was turned a... into 11-year-old kids. Yeah. I was like... It was a really good Dalek. Um, um, the, uh, we, actually, when... we actually spoke to the um, to the purveyor of that Dalek. Are you going to ask where we got it from? Yeah, it's a fan made Dalek that usually goes around to events doing charity fundraising. Uh-huh. And sort of bucket on its... And we talked to the the young lady who owned it, who turned up with her dad, who was one of the soldiers. He was he's quite into it as well. And we said this is, and she said this is actually built better than some of the BBC Daleks. And oh. I have to say, it looked fantastic. Yeah, it's it, like it's in it's um, it, it looks so good that when watching um the film, you, you know, you you don't even question it, 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 like that this is like not Prop. sort of an official Dalek, as it were, like um, it, because it, it just it just is, you know, it just it it, it completely and utterly fits in with. One them. thing I will say is when the whole head went on, you 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 forget someone's in there. Yeah, <laughs> and it is just a. And plus, obviously, it was botrized as well, and yeah. she was in, and she did do the voice, but obviously, we had to change that in in, yeah. in post production. It's just eerie if you think it's a Dalek. 
Oh yeah. Again, once, that... once it started being put together, it, it was like a cold October morning. This this van turned up, like unloading anything. And one of the best things we were doing some scenes outside and alongside our location was a railway line. So I like to think um, some people might have been going on the train that Saturday and yeah. just looked at the window. And thought, Did I just see a Dalek? And because we were filming at a storage unit, which was still operating, we didn't close the place down. It was still operating, so people mm. were literally like turning up with their stuff. We just got told, "Yeah, you can do what you want." Basically, um, it's like we had this uh, the kind of loading area where the TARDIS was, and the door would open when someone wants to bring their van in, and they just open the door and that. There's Doctor Who's TARDIS there. And like, <laughs> okay, hi. <laughs> Don't mind us. And some kids turned up and they wanted pictures with the Dalek, and we were all like, "Yeah, of course you can have a picture yeah. with the Dalek. Yeah, there's no problem at all." Um, but yeah, that that thing was really impressive. Um, my only kind of regrets was it didn't kill enough people. I think it only shot three people in the end. It. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the. Um, uh, like, because did, did you did you do you know because in um, in the, the the main show you know when when one of those bolts of light hits someone you see their skeleton that's yeah. Did you do that? I can't remember. We did. Um, my visual uh, effects artist uh, Martin was very clever. Mm. So oh. we had the full. We had a big discussion like, how are the laser bolts going to look? And I said, they've got to look. We've got to have the skeleton effect. <laughs> I re I remember. I think it was because you did that that like what um you know sort of anniversary watch thing of uh, mm. little, a few weeks ago. A few you know, weeks I remember. Ago. I remember watching that, and uh, Martin was talking about the um that that bit when you have to have that like green effect in the sky. Um, mm. and um, he's saying that it was like quite difficult to do. And and then I I sort of I think as I was watching your stream i sort of intercut between going and watching back the um uh the film and i i, I was i was looking at that and I, was, uh, and I was thinking well it might have been difficult to do but it really worked in the end you um, did a great job with it yeah um it uh there's a, you know i uh, i have great envy for people who can do special effects because um it uh it seems like such magic i think, I think, I think it, is, it is literal magic yeah. Um, don't ever call it special effects or video effects or what oh. I used to refer to it as um, studio magic. <laughs> well, we'll fix that later. Mm. Martin can fix that. Um, yeah, no, I, I have to say it was a very good fun experience. I think you would have had a good fun being being part of it. but Yeah, I, I, I don't think we knew each other at the time. I don't think we did. Um, and unfortunately, there's not going to be any more. Unless uh, unless some money appears from somewhere, presumably. Unless um, a lot of money appears yeah. from somewhere. Because <laughs> uh, Elliot, who played the Doctor, and his wife, they've now had three time tots, as I call wow. them. In... Sorry? Wow. I, I, was, I was just that, yeah, that like, uh, it, it's, um, I, it, it's it, you know. It's what married people I, tend to do, Ben. But, like, uh, you know, it's, yeah, I, so most of my friends, um, you know, most of the people in, in my generation, haven't had children yet and like they're they're now just starting to so like someone to have had three it's just like gosh this is well um, it was a pandemic as well and they were he was yeah. working from home so um the um i don't like the inference of there was hanky panky in the tardis oh gosh that, that is that's uh that's, oh, that's not a phrase it's I, bigger uh, on the inside oh god <laughs> Sonic me. <laughs> oh, dear, like this is turning. This is still turning into. Uh, I think, like fast. we, uh, we, um, we, we, we have. There hasn't been an occasion when we've been in like I think comment sections. I didn't like. I know there used there used to be a time when like Barrett um, would do uh, you know live streams, and we'd just be like in the comment section, just like taking the piss all the time. Um, oh, there was that and... one on um, on Discord where we were talking about um, red giants and black. Oh, was holes. that on Discord? Yeah, that was. Gosh, that was. Um, um, <laughs> we were talking about space romance. <laughs> Stick your red giant. Into I, I remember, yeah. We, like when, when, to, when, when we, when you get to set up a new pen name and, and release some uh, space-based um, erotica. <laughs> space smart. <laughs> to boldly um. go, no man has gone before. <laughs> 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 but um deep space nine <laughs> inches. it's 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 gotten to that put that point and like, we're just like 
we we have just got like gotten with like goodness knows where the topic is the topic is receding wildly into the past the, i'd be um, like oh sorry i'm just probing uranus <laughs> oh my oh my god we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to stop this this is this is just turning turning into something else entirely probing uranus <laughs> Did you no, ever play the Did you ever play the game Mass Effect? Because there's a there's a there's a there's a bit where in the second game in the series, it's a really good series to be honest, really good storytelling before anyone messed it up. Mm. Um, and you get to go around probing planets in the in the kind of galaxy. And of course, there's a kind of joke where the you go to Uranus and you can mm. launch a probe, and the computer of the ship kind of goes, oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell this game was marketed oh. at adolescent men. <laughs> it's um, I don't know. I wonder if anyone's ever um, someone must. Oh, someone there, must there, there's, uh... there's someone in the in the writing community who keeps saying they're writing a romance based in a bakery, a, a was it sweet and spicy romance? I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's called Project Sugar and Spice. I'm thinking. I do you know. I f I feel like a bakery is too easy of a place to set that kind of thing. There's that like there there are. You way want an too iced many. finger? Yeah, there's too many too <laughs> many things you can do. <laughs> um, yeah, re plenty of references to flowery <laughs> maps um, and um, impressive um, girth on the rolling pin. Yeah, that's certainly risen very well. Uh, Give it a light dusting of flour. <laughs> We roll it out. Glaze, glaze it with some uh, egg white before. Uh, <laughs> oh dear! Yeah, see, a, a bakery is—it's too easy. There's too many options to do for that. You gotta gotta oh. give yourself a challenge. Like, <laughs> gonna stick a bun in your oven. Uh, yeah, like my goodness, we could. Uh, oh, we could probably go on here. for like two hours doing these. There's oh, so yeah. many. Should we um, wrap it up then? This, let's this yeah. Let's uh, let's come back to this when uh, when there's more Doctor Who to review sometime That's what next she year. Said. That would be that would require an extraordinary degree of contortion. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything's possible now in Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. Russell T. Davis said it, and uh, and if it's not, yeah. When that there's that you know from this point on, if any writer says anything's possible, I I am going to you know place. Very high expectations on that. Like now, you've got to surprise me. You said anything's possible, um, so like sh prove it. Um, don't just give me something predictable. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to this um, when there's more Doctor Who to uh, review, and maybe maybe we'll only end up doing two of these because maybe the next stuff will be shit. Who um, knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, we're descending into bad. Like we're at, we're ending this now. This is this is gonna this is just gonna descend into more and more bad puns. We're uh, we're ending this now. Bye, okay. everyone. <laughs>